Pop, 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 pop. Hey, sorry. Uh, hold on. I'm still still trying to fix everything. Uh. Yeah, I already tried um, different captures and it wasn't picking up for some reason. So we can save 24 killers for a future stream, but for today we're going to go off schedule and we're just going to play something else. <laughs> oh, hold on a moment, I also just need to tweet. Um... Oh, sorry about that. Hold on. Let me lower my microphone a bit. Maybe like a seven? How's this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah, I really, I, so yesterday when I had opened OBS, um, stream elements updated, and then I thought like maybe it was an issue with stream elements on OBS, so I re-downloaded OBS and tried opening the game again, it still didn't work, and tried different captures, it still wasn't working, then tried opening other games and those worked, so um, yeah, we got quite a couple choices. Unfortunately, not alien themes like I kind of wanted to do, but eh, it's it, it's just that kind of day, I guess. Also, I I, um, I was already kind of like running behind because uh, I came home late and then I like made dinner and then ran to shower and now I have my dinner sitting here on my desk. I don't typically eat during stream, but and I wasn't even eating while I was trying to like uh, fix all the issues, so... <laughs> I have to postpone... Sorry, I'm still writing the tweet. Postpone 24 killers for another day. I'm going to play something else tonight. Oh, should I be louder then? Or am I... maybe I'm just talking quiet. Oh, you were... F okay. I uh, my volume... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Calico jump scare. Uh, I'll bump it up a little bit more then. How about, like, this... Because, uh, working. I'm, I'm trying to fix the issue. Um, that's me. That's me doing the, the technical fixes. Same waiting room link. Okay. So... It kind of makes me sad. I should have tested it earlier, but you know. It's fine, we'll come back to it another time. I was really looking forward to 24 killers. Uh, um, in the meantime, okay, so I think we have a couple choices here. Um, something, okay, so I don't want to spend more time trying to like download a game that I don't have yet. So one of the games that I tested out to open was a visual novel, and it's been a bit, so are you guys cool with doing the visual novel today? If you have any objections, it's too late, I'm opening the game right now. <laughs> and yeah, um, it seems like even those stream elements- oh wait, hold on, the game might be really loud. Ah! Oh, actually, just kidding. The desktop audio is muted because we were fixing some stuff. Um, so I can just lower it on my end. Let's see. 
Yeah, this is fine. Okay. Um. Peekaboo. <laughs> okay. Let's try to get this open now. Ah. It was doing this earlier too. See that tiny square? I don't know why. Okay, and then like I I go back to the configuration and sunlight's fixed. I don't know why it's been acting weird. But yeah, again I had fixed or the stream elements update did yesterday, but I don't see the YouTube chat on the side. So something's up. I don't know what, so I'll bring you guys down here so I can read chat. And uh... Okay. So, I kind of wanted to save this game for closer to the summer, but yeah, we gotta make do with what we got. So we'll just chill out today. Um... So this is, wait, is it, why is it, hold up, okay, on my end, wait, is the, why is it not, okay, why is the window still, like, on the configuration, at least on OBS, it's not updating properly, can you guys see that, because at least what I'm looking at, Oh, I also don't have the audio on. There you go. Um, so what I'm looking at right now is the main screen, but on OBS I see the configuration screen. And there's a weird, like, little square here. Are you guys seeing that too? Is it stuck on the configuration menu? I'm going to scream. <laughs> Why? I don't understand. Oh, okay. Now it's working. What in the world? Okay. Okay, it's not showing the main menu for some reason, but it looks like if I click the other choices, it'll go and update. And for whatever reason, there's still like a little, like this square here. I don't know what this is. And why isn't it showing like the whole thing? So if I go, this is really weird. Why doesn't it show the main screen? Tutorial. I mean, I guess as long as you guys can see the new stuff and it keeps updating, it should be fine. Um, okay, yeah, it looks like it's working. Somewhat. <laughs> uh, okay, uh... Okay, yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, 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 do. Um, quit. Yes. Whoop. Just, whoop. I didn't think that would close out the entire game. My bad. I just wanted to get out of the tutorial. Uh oh. Oh, okay. Man, if I, yeah, for some reason the main menu isn't showing, but everything else is. I guess that's fine. <laughs> I guess so. Okay, I guess we can just start then. And if we run into any other issues, I'll just, uh, Archive. <laughs> Archive the stream. Um, 
And hopefully we don't have any other issues tomorrow, because I have two streams planned this weekend. Anyways. Um, fun fact about this game. Oh, okay, you literally can't skip the tutorial. It's part of the game. Um, fun fact about this game. Um, so the composers who worked on this game also worked on uh well they're the they're the two composers that i commissioned um for my music my original music so i'll be hearing some familiar sounds and tomorrow's a big day true it's uh, splatoon time That's right, composers. The glorious duo, Fat Bard. So, welcome to our life beginning and always. There are various ways you can customize and interact with the game. This tutorial is an overview of how certain features work. You can read the full tutorial, the main menu, okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't think, I'm surprised they even made a tutorial for a visual novel. <laughs> like it's pretty straightforward. Um, oh, and also, our life- so this is the first game, and um, the very first game that I ever streamed, which was on Twitch, and then not on YouTube, was the se- well, not exactly the sequel, but like a second game of the same series called Our Life, um, New- I might be- I'm- I'm mixing things up. Um, but it's- it's the second- it's like the fall-themed one. This one is like summer- summer theme. Start off. The game is divided into four time periods called steps. Step one, childhood. Step two, adolescence. Step three, young adulthood. And step four, adulthood. Our life is further divided into sets of vignettes that take place during specific periods of time. Those are called moments. Moments can be played in any order or skipped entirely. Yeah, I mean, it was- so- <laughs> The only reason why I was on Twitch was because, um, so back when I, well, it was more like I just had this itch to stream, and I had been waiting, uh, f for one reason or another, and I just randomly decided one night I wanted to stream, but I didn't realize that for YouTube streaming, you have to, uh, I guess you have to put, uh, like a request in. For your channel to stream like and then it takes 24 hours to approve which i didn't know and then i was like well i still want to stream like now so i just went on twitch and then i streamed there and that's why the only vod um on this channel that is like a an uploaded video was that vod from twitch because everything else has been streamed here exclusively on youtube Yeah, it's, uh, it's the perfect game for me. Yeah, and neither did I until that moment. <laughs> we all learned something that day. Actually, I should uh, notify my friend real quick, because the, the friend that I played our, the other Our Life game with, they're also a fan of visual novels, and specifically they were playing this game that we're playing right now. So they might want to know that I'm streaming this, actually. I'm playing our life right now. Because I had technical issues with the other game. Okay. Let's see what they say. Also, my dinner. Um, thankfully, I can eat whether it's hot or cold, but I've got some rotisserie chicken and boiled eggs. So oh, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> well, you um, probably got like um, a lot of watch hours and stuff already, right? Since your channel's already established.
The moments can be played in any order or skipped entirely. You move on to the next step whenever you want by selecting that summer is ending. Steps 1 to 3 include 5 moments each and even more can be unlocked by purchasing DLCs. Some are out now and other DLCs will release later on. Step 4 is an epilogue and doesn't include moments. A lot happens over the years that go by, especially in regard to the character you play as. You determine nearly everything about the main character, name, appearance, personality, pronouns, interest, skills, the relationship with major characters, and so on. You can decide to change the details as time goes on with a few exceptions. Your last name, skin tone, and eye color can't be altered once set. Much of the MC's basic traits are determined on a character creation screen. As the MC grows up, more options become available on the screen. As mentioned, one of the decisions you'll get to make for your character is selecting a name. You can type in any name you like, or you can pick a preset name. Preset options are called voice names because a name will be voiced aloud by the romantic lead. You'll get to hear him say your name as you play through the story. Ooh. Only the default name, Jamie, is included in the base game. Hundreds more can be added by getting a free voice name expansion DLC. The full collection of names is separated out as a DLC because of how large it is. If you're not interested in that feature, you don't need to get it. Each name in the DLC belongs to or was selected by someone who supported this project. Aww, that's cute! On the character creation screen, there's a cute doll you can decorate to get an idea of what your MC looks like with the different traits put together. Not all the things you decide about the MC appear on the doll. The script ref referencing what, you're, what you've decided for the MC is the main way those decisions influence the game. Our life has a first-person perspective, so your character doesn't appear next to other character sprites. You only see the MC as a decorative doll and in special cut-in CG images. The cut-in CGs only appear if certain choices are made. It's possible not to see any during a playthrough. There's also a second type of special MC-based screen, the Interest Comfort screen. Unless you get DLCs, the game has one love interest, Cove Holden. He grows up with the MC and the Interest Comfort screen is crucial for determining how that plays out. That you win DLC to finally hear someone say your name. Uh... Sag. <laughs> interest level sets how much you like him. There are four levels. Disinterest, Fond, Crush, and Love. Love is only available starting in Step 3 and if you are at Fond or Crush in Step 2. Comfort determines how you generally react or think when it comes to him. There are three levels. Nervous, Relaxed, and Direct. Oh wait, I realized I just had my controller like sitting in my lap, but we don't need a controller for this game. You can just see the mouse. <laughs> Let's see, your, lo uh, your level of interest and comfort will set the type of dynamic your character has with the love interest. What you did in the past will influence the present, and feelings can change over time. You get to pick your interest and comfort near the beginning of every step. Comfort can switch between the three levels as you please. Your interest level can only stay the same or increase. Your current level of interest will become the new lowest option on the screen in the future. For example, if you decide to be Fawn in Step 1, this interest will not be available on the screen in Steps 2 and 3, which will make Fawn the bottom level option for your relationship. Interest level has an impact when it comes to physically interacting with Cove, but growing up, things are simple. If you get along with one another and have a close relationship, you can choose to touch him whoa, and Cove will occasionally interact with the MC in lighthearted or comforting ways. But starting in step 3, touching can become more romantic or suggestive if you're at a crush or love. To make sure things go nicely with that, there will be an extra choice to determine initiative level and a bonus mini tutorial that goes along with the choice to explain the feature in more detail. Basically, even if you decide you like Cove, the game won't force you to act on those feelings. You can always choose not to get together with him, choose not to accept or give romantic gestures, etc. If you do decide to date Cove, though, you can't break up with him later. Oh, we're we in it for, for the long run, boys. Interest and comfort gets the basic down, but it's the choices that appear throughout the normal game events that decide what actually happens between the MC and Cove. And it isn't only the MC who is impacted by your decisions. Cove grows and changes over the years. How he's treated and what he experiences help shape who he becomes. In steps 2 and step 3, Cove's personality, appearance, and interests will vary based on what happened in the previous step. It's something of a mystery exactly how your decisions end up changing him. You can try to guess as you go along. Or, if you prefer, you can also just design your own ideal Cove directly using the Cove Creator option that pops up at the beginning of steps 2 and 3. Making the choices you want is always more important than making a choice because you feel like you have 
to in order to get to a certain result. When a choice does appear, usually you'll see that hovering the cursor over an option shows a certain color, yellow, blue, or green. My favorite colors. Colors aren't related to specific points or effects, they're only there to give a bit of insight on the tone or emotion of the choice, since text alone can potentially be read in more than one way. Blue tends to be casual straightforward, yellow more emotive and reactive, and green less certain or uncommitted. Though there are hundreds of options in our life and not every choice menu falls in line with that pattern. Picking just one color every time doesn't give a gameplay benefit, only stick to a certain type if that's what you happen to like, otherwise switch between them freely. Always pick yellow, never pick yellow, pursue romance right from the start, never romance the love interest to be disagreeable or amiable, none of them will lead to a bad ending. Oh, we love a game with no bad endings. That's, we've already had too much trouble tonight. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. You're welcome to enjoy the events and shape the story without reservation. And then, if you like, you can play again to try something new. There's only ever more good content to discover. We hope you'll have a nice time with our life. Thank you for playing! Yay! Oh man, this is us. Last name last. Uh, let's see. Mm. I think I'm... I'm like a oval. Oval-ish. Uh, definitely... More like an olive. Between olive and tan. We'll go with olive. I shape. Mm. Ooh. Lots of choices. Yeah, we'll go with the round. And art color. Ooh. Uh, my eyes are... I mean, it's hard to tell, but they're brown. We'll go with like a... Uh, we'll just go brown. Or maybe more like red. Or like a... I don't know. Like... Just, um, let's go like red, R red brown. <laughs> um, that's for hair. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Oh, this is kind of close. Oh, I mean, wah. <laughs> um. Yeah, there's. It's hard. Whoa. Really long hair, sideburns, strands. Mm. Wow. Oh, whoa. <gasps> they have a braid. Just like me. Oh, okay. This is definitely more me, but let me see if they have any other styles. Ah, this is kind of close too, actually. Wow. Um. Oh! Look at that! That actually is pretty close. And so is this one. Mmm. Oh, they have so many hairstyles. Whoa, you even have two-tone hair. That's cool. Wow, so many choices. Okay, um, I'm gonna go back to the short styles. Hmm. The bangs are a little long here. Let's go with this one. Blunt. I think it looks more similar. Wow. Cute. Oh. Yeah, short one. Oh. Long. Multiple braids. Wavy. Long, blunt, bun, twist. Wavy two. Short two. Around. Sleek, strands, ponytail, buns. Man, this is, I I mean I'd remember the um the other R Life game being also very customizable, but this is more than I remember. <laughs> I think we'll go with short one. Yeah, that looks more like mine. And the hair color is uh we are like a mm -hmm. We're 
here, like kind of between like yellow and beige. So let's just go beige. Mm hmm. There's a lot of hair. Um. There we go. Yeah, let go. Whoop. The last Pascal. No, we're just Pascal. <laughs> and we'll go with they. Okay. Birthmarks. Oh, we can do a little. What is this one? That was something under the hair that we can't see. Scars? Oh. Rosy cheeks. Freckles? Oh. Hand size medium, chubby, slender. I think um, my hands are between medium and sl uh, slender. And we don't have glasses, but look at these glasses types. Very cute. A lot of different styles. Next, whoa, lots of birthmarks, more scars and freckles. Um, or hats, clothing types, shirts, pants, um, dresses, skirts. Hmm. Um. Not so much skirts, but I'm down with dresses. And I think we are good. Done. Alright. <laughs> the theaters this fall. No, it's summertime. Oh, am I? I'm kind of in the way of the chat box, or the text box. Let me move myself a little bit. Beep. Hopefully that's better. <laughs> Scooched myself over. Anyways. Summer in Sunset Bird was a special time of year. Your usually sleepy town began to bustle. It was a popular tourist destination with people coming from all over to enjoy the beach, the weather, and the re relaxation that came with both. The smell of the ocean, crisp and salty, hung in the air. Bringing three whole months of school this vacation with it. Yeah, that's the one thing I miss about school, is just having those three months off, like, guaranteed. During the summer, your moms didn't like you to wander too far outside of your neighborhood, so you knew the area pretty well. That included the people. Families came and went from Sunset Bird, but they mostly stayed and did what your mom called putting down roots. They built businesses, they got to know each other, and they definitely said hello to the nice young kids who waved when passing their stores. Going for a walk around town mostly meant that the familiar, friendly residents waved, or asked how your family was, or most often just said hello. Let's see. Did you guys think I'm a teacher? Oh uh, yeah, I'll just put myself through more school. <laughs> You didn't really get why they always had to say hi. They saw you every day, but you nodded back at them anyway. You ended up saying hi to a lot of different people, since most of the tourists that came and went every summer were the same ones. Or, you were too anxious to say hi back to most of the other residents that greeted you, but they all knew you well enough to expect that. Um, Probably this one. You enjoy learning all about where they were visiting from and hope to visit those places one day too. But today, there was a man sitting on the curb outside your house. He was sitting with his head in his hands, his whole body slumped over, and you wondered if he was even a real person, or a statue that had magically sprung up from the ground overnight. Whoever or whatever he was, you had never seen him before. One thing about knowing everyone in Sunset Bird was that people who you didn't recognize really, really stood out. It was rare for tourists to venture into the residential district, as your moms called it. So for you, not knowing who a total stranger was set off a lot of red flags. You know, stranger danger, get out of my property. 
Your mom's had a talk with you and your big sister Lizzie about this kind of situation before. You hadn't exactly been listening at the time. You think it'd be okay to talk to new people? No, stranger danger. They mentioned that some people aren't good to talk to, but other types of people can help you even if you don't know them. Mmm. Kind of... I don't know about that one. <laughs> Remember that it's okay to run away if you feel uncomfortable. You don't have to worry about being polite then. Uh... This one. If it seems sketch, we just run away. You weren't sure about this man yet. Still, you felt a bit scared knowing that he was blocking the way to your front door. Yeah, that's kind of... Please don't sit in front of my house. But you were pretty interested. You wanted to know more about what was going on. Whether he was nice or not, you don't want to be bothered. Um, I'd be more uh, anxious and curious at the same time, but more on the cautious side. You slowed down, your mind racing for ideas on how to get past him unseen, but it was too late to escape. There was a split second where your eyes met and you took in a shaky breath, your eyes darting to the sky, pretending to stare at a bird who was hovering nearby. Hey! His voice startled you and made you jump, but still, you didn't look at him. The bird landed on top of a nearby gatepost and its black feathers ruffled against the gentle breeze. Trying to keep your eyes on it was tough. Oh, trying to keep your eyes on it was tough, especially when the man stood up and started to make his way toward you. Oh no, this is scary. Not wanting to seem too approachable, you folded your arms and stared. Still unsure about him, but willing to be friendly, you offered this stranger a smile. Your whole body was frozen in place as he approached. I do that thing where, like, when I don't know what to do, I'll nervously laugh or, like, smile. Because I just, like, I'm, I'm, like, too in shock to, and still trying to process what's going on. The man gives a grin of his own back. Do you live around here? What's your name? Whoa, look at his shorts. He's got little sharks on him, and he has a stingray tattoo. He looked the man up and down, taking in his tan skin and relaxed appearance. At least his clothes were relaxed. The way he was acting wasn't. He had sharks on his shorts and a stingray tattoo, and you wondered if he was obsessed with the ocean or something. Sounds like he could be my best friend. <laughs> uh, while you made your assessment, he looked at you expectantly, waiting for an answer to his question. Yeah, I live here. I live right there. My name is Calico. You continue to say nothing. Well, uh, now that he's being a little more friendly, maybe we... Well, actually, maybe we shouldn't even say... We shouldn't let a stranger know where we live. That's kind of weird. And also, we shouldn't let him know our name. If you do, he rubbed the back of his neck uncomfortably, giving you a small smile. What? He reached into his pocket and pulled out a clean $20 bill. It crinkled in his hand as he held it up to you. Even more confused than before, you looked back at him. Well, well can you do me a favor? Nothing bad. Sorry, I should have... Let me start over. He cleared his throat and stood up straighter. <coughs> From where you were standing, it just made him look creepier. I have a son. His name is Cove. Who's about your age? Your dad? Cove, that seemed like a strange name for an actual living person to you. You chewed on the inside of your cheek. This guy was definitely obsessed with water. Though, I mean, so am I, so... <laughs> you thought that was pretty cool. Um... He's definitely obsessed with water. He wasn't the only person like that in Sunset Bird. We moved in across the street, see? He gestured toward the house that had been empty for a year, his watch catching the late afternoon sunlight and reflecting off the walls. I tried to capture that zaddy audience. Oh no. Zaddy. <laughs> Forget Ko. We're gonna do his dad. <laughs> The gigantic for sale sign was finally gone. You must be Calico Pascal, right? I met your moms earlier and they told me you were eight, just like him, so... He shook the $20 bill to bring it back to your attention, a hopeful smile tilting his lips at the corners. Can you try to be friends with the boy? 
just give it a chance and you can keep this. He's a good kid, you'll like him. But you gotta keep it a secret too, okay? It wouldn't be friendly to say his dad sent you, and that he also gave me 20 bucks. <laughs> you eyed the man. You kind of felt sorry for Cove. Did other kids really get their parents to pay for friendships? Yeah, that's kind of sussy, dude. Had your mom done that for you and Lizzie? The thought made you frown. What'd you say? Want to make a deal? <laughs> we can just run away. <laughs> We don't need money. I'm eight. What am I gonna do with a $20 bill? He took a step back from him, clearly refusing to accept the offer. He defaulted enough to notice, but not completely. Yeah. <laughs> Here's 20 bucks. Hang out with my kid. It won't be so bad. Even if it's just for the summer, that'd be enough. That only made this sound more strange to you. Why does it- why does it lasting for the summer matter? When it was clear his initial strategy wasn't going to fly, he tucked the bill into a back pocket and changed the request. I get it. You don't have to. Would you be more comfortable with he and I coming by for a normal visit? No money involved. Yeah, I want to meet him. Okay, you can do that. I guess. You'd have to ask my moms. Yeah, we're not gonna let some man into our house. His smile got bigger again, his eyes crinkled at the sides. Of course, they invited us over earlier, but I'd like to ask you too. Then I guess you can. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'll bring him by tomorrow. I wanted him to meet and greet with the neighbors today, but... Well, I don't know where he's gone off to. Okay, so you're gonna bribe an eight-year-old with a $20 bill and you don't even know where your son is? Bro. <laughs> what the heck? And then you're blocking the path to my house? Please leave. <laughs> You take the $20, does this put you on the escort career path? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he laughed when he said that, but with the way his face looked, you looked, you thought he want actually wanted to cry. Wait, you really don't know where your son is? If, if you see him, can you tell him to come on home? You lost your eight-year-old son? He's got a pink cast and glasses. You can't miss it. <laughs> yeah, he dude's got his priorities out of order. For real. My guy. <laughs> I can say. Uh, I can try. I don't know if we'll find your son. I'm only eight. <laughs> you nodded. Not totally certain that you'd find Cove, but willing to look. <laughs> he was saying, here's 20 bucks, find my son, and then don't let everybody else know that I lost him. The man smiled and reached out to pat you on the head, paused before doing so, then pulled his hand away instead. Your mom's already checking around for me. Such a thoughtful group you are. Wait, you just- you, so you asked my mom to look for him too? What in the world? Wait, yeah, why aren't you looking? You were gonna enlist my help to look? I better go look too. Can't put everyone else to work while I keep sitting here. Yeah, you're his dad. You should be the one looking, not my mom's. Thought he might come back and that's not what's important. I have to go. Yeah, wait. Why are you here? <laughs> Thanks again, Calico. So much. Man. <laughs> he jogged off down the street without another word. He decided to check the hills behind your house. Ugh. Friends with kids in a broken home simulator. <laughs> in, a, in a really nice neighborhood, I suppose. So I guess it's fine. Hopefully everybody's safe. The chirping of crickets and the tall grass greeted you, quiet and familiar. From the top of the hill, you could see the ocean. As you walked, you listened to the crash of the waves on the shore and the seagulls squawking as they settled down for the night. Boys loved the ocean. It was so much fun. You loved to hear stories about the sea, about the merfolk and sea serpents you imagine living far beneath the waves. Um, definitely not this one. It's gonna be the top one for sure. This one would be good too, but we're always- we're all about the sea. Over here... 
Sometimes Lizzie would join you, the two of you splashing each other in the waves. Those were the best days. You took in a deep breath. You wanted to try to relax and couldn't. Yeah, because we were just approached by some strange man who offered us money to find his son. Uh. You weren't sure what, but something told you that you weren't alone, so you glanced around. Oh, okay. He's just here. There was a boy sitting at the top of one hill, almost completely hidden within the long grass and white flowers surrounding him. His head was buried in his knees, staring ahead by himself. For whatever reason, probably just that he wasn't paying attention, he hadn't noticed you yet. Ko shows up to school the next day apologizing to teachers, saying he fell on the doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> he watched him a minute longer, feeling a little bit like he'd found a deer in the wild. Though deer didn't have green hair, wavy eyebrows, huge glasses, pink casts, or sad frowns. Mm. Yeah. Um. Well, the deer don't have any of these typically. <laughs> uh. Go with sad frowns. Why are you sad? Because your dad lost you? But this new boy did. You wondered what could have upset him. After a few more seconds, you took a step forward, and then another. And then he glanced your way. His aquamarine eyes reflected the light of the moon. You stopped, raising a hand to acknowledge him and show you weren't scary. What? Why would we call him Space Cadet? Are you lost? I mean, apparently you're lost. So says your dad. Well, just say hi. With a start, he jumped to his feet, his hands balling into fists at his sides. <laughs> no, he's crying. <laughs> he's like, my dad lost me. <laughs> he didn't say anything, just stared at you in a strange way. He'd been crying. There were traces of tears on his cheeks and his knees, soaking the hem of his shorts, and his eyes were still shining with a few more. You obviously caught him off guard. His pink cast seemed to glow in the twilight, though when he caught you staring at it, he hid his arm behind his back. I always greet people as space cadets. <laughs> Something the man earlier had s said stuck out to you. Ko? Ah. Uh, eyes wide, he studied you. How'd you know that? See you later, space cadet. We out of here. <laughs> why would you? Why would we lie? We literally just met your dad. Oh. So, is this your hill? He gestured with his uninjured arm to the patch of grass surrounding you, his face falling at the prospect. I can leave if it is. Yep, you can't own a hill. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we can call it ours if we want, but generally, no. Can't own a hill. Why not? How could you? You just do. I had a hill back home. What the heck? Well, this still isn't mine. Oh. He sat back down with a thump, resting his chin on his knees again. Curious about the strange new boy with the odd dad, you sat on the patch of grass next to him. The pure white flowers that covered this hill rocked back and forth gently as the stars twinkled above. The way they dotted the sky made them seem like flowers, too. The night wind was cool as it traveled over the ocean and up the hill, chasing away the heat from the afternoon sun. Why are you here? Why'd your family move? Um, I want to know why you're out here and your dad has no idea where you are. Don't know what <laughs> a quiet hiccup escaped Cove as soon as you asked the question. Almost like they never stopped this tear start up again with the vengeance. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> My parents... They don't want to live together with me anymore. The tears fell fast and heavy over his flushed cheeks, sticking in his dark lashes. My mom made my dad leave, and he took me with him, and now we have a house here, and I want to go home. Oh. The outburst took you off guard. By the time he was done wailing, Cove's chest was heaving with exhaustion. He sniffled and removed his glasses, wiping at his eyes with the back of his hand before he put them back on again. I hate this place. I want my real life back. I want my mom. 
Your dad seems kind of nice. Um, your dad seems kind of incompetent, if I'm a be honest. <laughs> You'll like it here, you just had to get used to it. Stop crying. We need to tell him to just suck it up. <laughs> tell him they're getting divorced because they don't love him anymore. No! <laughs> We're not that cruel. He slipped his hands underneath his glasses and pressed his fingers against his eyelids. Cole wound himself up again for another long crying fit. He felt bad for him, being forced to come here with no choice. You can imagine what it would feel like to live with only one of your moms, but it must be pretty hard. But from way off in the distance, you heard your parents. Calico! Kids, where did you go? Cove looked at you, tears still clinging to his cheeks. Don't tell them we're here. I go home. Oh, I don't want to go back to that house. I want to go home. You can handle it. You have to go. Don't worry so much. Sorry, I have to. It'll be okay. You were struck by a sudden need to reassure Cove. It, it's not going to be all fun, but isn't he your family too? Yeah, I guess. And can then you can count on him when you really, really need him. You shot him a grin and pushed yourself to your feet. Slowly, Cove stood up with you, still looking a little reluctant. His dad voice rang out again. Cove, can you hear me? He looked toward the sound of his dad's voice, silent, then turned away while rubbing his not bandaged arm. Sorry, I still don't want to go. Hey, you're just gonna stay out here the whole time? You called out yourself. You waited silently with him. You tried to convince him. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I guess my dad is my family. <laughs> Whatever. Dang, he he hit in the that those teenage years kind of fast. We're gonna let's just let them know we're out here. I I feel kind of bad that dad just like totally lost. Wanting to go home, you raised your own voice. Over here! <laughs> He's like, why the fuck did you do that? <laughs> Ko's face soured. He said nothing, but his thoughts were probably pretty nasty at that moment. The trio of parents appeared over the curve of the hill. Instantly, all their eyes landed on you and they rushed over. Whoa! Dude, our... M Bro... <laughs> No wonder we're so good looking, dang. Both of your moms were at your side in a split second, faces filled with worry. Calico, you're here after all. We had been at the park to check for Cove and then heard what happened earlier when you met the new neighbor. I thought you might have gone off further away. <laughs> no, we were just sitting in the grass. Why is everybody acting like this is such a big thing? I mean... If you lost track of an eight-year-old child, it's kind of a big thing. <laughs> We're okay, don't worry. Cove didn't want to go home just yet. Oh, should we just like, throw him under the bus? <laughs> <laughs> Thank god you're both fine. Were you two having fun out here? He looked over at Cove, who was wiggling against his dad's tight hug and pushing at his arms. Yeah, mommy? Sorry? <laughs> mommy? <laughs> You shrugged. Yes, I like him. Um, mm, he's good. I think I'm gonna- Whoa! How are we so sure? Yeah, my mommies. Mm, mommies. <laughs> That's our mommies. Um... I don't know. He was kind of... <laughs> Alright. We'll just... I feel bad for him. He nodded, smiling slightly. Finally letting go of his squirming, scowling son, Ko's dad turned to the three of you. Thanks very much for finding him. I really don't know this neighborhood. Good thing Calico knows this whole area so well. Absolutely. We should be getting home now. It's been a long day for us all. Say goodbye, Cove. Bye. The two of them walked off into the darkness, heading toward the neighborhood. You watched Cove's bright pink cast until it disappeared. Hmm, tell me what. We'll have a proper play date tomorrow, okay, okay? Your new friend's dad wanted to bring him by to see you and Lizzie. How does that sound? 
when I saw Ko's dad, I was like, oh, is this an Otome game? Then when I saw the mummies, <laughs> it's a game for everyone. True. Be appealing to the masses. Sounds like words. Not dug your hair down. Can I show him my stuff? Then okay. Both your moms laughed, the sounds overlapping into a warm, familiar chorus. Mommy put her arm around your shoulder and led you towards the path. Satisfied, and more than a little ready to go to bed after your long, exciting day, you followed them home. Choose your feeling for Cove. This is how you feel towards Cove for this step. It can change in later steps. Okay. We are, uh, comfort. I would say we're direct. Um, interest. We are currently indifferent or fond. Yeah, we're indifferent. We literally just met this kid. Okay. Begin step one at direct indifference. We'll be able to change it again until step two. Yep. Early the next morning, you were poking at your food, eating it slowly. Your sister Lizzie had run out earlier to go play, but you stayed put. Today, just like your moms had promised, Cove was coming to hang out. Excited to see your new friend again, Calico? We're not friends, really. Okay. With that said, are you done with your breakfast? <laughs> I don't know, am I? Your bowl was entirely empty, so you nodded. Yeah, I'm done. With all the exasperation an eight-year-old could muster, you looked at your empty cereal bowl, then at mom. Okay, attitude kid, we see. I'm like- I'm like a dog where I'm like, put the food in the bowl. The bowl's empty. Put the food in the bowl now. <laughs> Good job. She should be here soon. Cleanup began and then, on cue, there was a knock. It was hesitant, like the person wasn't sure they were in the right place. Still loud, though. We need to get a more obvious doorbell. I know, I know. Calico, could you get it? Because mom said so, you wandered over to the door. Hey, Pascal family, thanks for having us. Mr. Holden, as your moms have called him, and his son were here. Cove looked different in the bright lighting of your living room, and when he wasn't crying. With his dad standing in front of him and mom and mommy behind you, you and Cove looked at each other. You studied Cove apathetically. This was the parents' plans, not yours. Not seeming any more excited than you were, he just stared back. You want to go play in your room, Calico? Sure. I've got some cool stuff, come look. Okay. Let us know if you need anything, you two. Have fun, kids. See you later, son. Play nice. Oh, look, our room is blue and mint. That's so cute. I actually used to have a daybed just like that. You led him to your room, puffing out your chest a little bit at the sight of your treasures. Yeah, this is this is my room. There are lots of stuffed animals, a cool bed, and a window to look out. It was a great room. You hadn't had anyone to show it to in a while, but you were really proud of it. Mm -hmm. We're proud. This is our spot. He leaned in a little closer to one of your drawings on the wall. I like this. Me too. I drew that. Thank you. I don't. What? I drew that. Cool. You smiled at him. You were proud of that particular piece of art, and you were glad he noticed it. He turned to look around the room a little more, studying the books on your desk and the pictures on the walls. He started to feel a bit nervous. He felt the atmosphere was kind of awkward. You were glad for the company. You hoped he liked your room. And... Hope he likes... I hope he thinks my room is cool, and therefore I am cool. He put a lot of effort into making your room as nice as it was. You hoped he didn't say anything bad about it. Then his eyes landed on the tiny box of beach things you'd collected, tucked away by your door. He took a step step towards it, before hesitating and pointing at it instead. What's that? A hoard of stuff I found on the beach. Wow, this is very me, actually. <laughs> Do you have any driftwood in there? Dragging the box into the middle of the room, you and Cove flopped down next to it. I do, look! He gestured to a piece at the bottom, still covered with specks of sand. Neat, this is a good collection. He got the sense from the tone of his voice that he wasn't just saying it to be nice, or to be like Shiloh. He actually meant it. I forgot about Shiloh. Shiloh? 
He's friends with my older sister, and he's supposed to hang out here this afternoon. Do I have to see him? You don't have to do anything, but he's going to be here. Anyway, I found this gigantic shell here stuck to an even bigger rock. You pulled out seashell after seashell, explaining where you'd gotten each one and holding them up against the light. Uh, it, it's tucked away somewhere, like in my storage, but I definitely still have a box that literally is just like full of seashells and things that I collected in my childhood. This game is like reading me like a book. There were big ones, small ones, pink, purple, and orange. Most of them you washed off in the bathroom sink when you brought them home, cleaning off the sand. Over the past few years, you'd even learned some of their scientific names. The collection was so huge and varied that you had a lot of funny stories to tell for all of them. You, your voice faltered a little bit, but you kept going as best as you could. Um, I've not done this, but I probably have done this one for sure. <clears throat> this is my room, bird mating strut. <laughs> you do a little dance, do a little, a little, a little, a little wiggle. Maybe do a little. This is my room. Apparently fascinated, either by the stories or by the shells themselves, Cove listened with what looked like the full force of his attention. He's so awestruck, his mouth is just left agape. <laughs> how, how entertaining we are right now. Like when you almost got pinched by a hermit crab while searching for shells, and after watching him scuttle back into the ocean, you found another empty shell that was almost a twin to his home. It was a new experience to be the center of such dedicated focus. Even it was only directed at the shells. Kids, come down to the living room. You could tell the idea was making him unhappy, but Mommy wasn't giving you much of a chance to hang around. Cove hadn't been like this meeting you. You guessed it was because he thinks you found each other by accident, not that a parent made it happen. Mr. Holden must be right that telling Cove his dad was part of that would be a bad idea. I totally forgot that he told us that, to be honest. Before you knew it, you'd both been escorted downstairs and deposited in the living room, ready for Shiloh's visit. The two of you sat side by side on the floor of your home's entryway. I brought the box of shells. I want to keep looking at them. Great! Okay, be careful. You should have asked. I would tell him to be careful. Those are my shells, dude. You know how much effort it took to put those together? <clears throat> I will. You weren't sure if you could trust someone else with your treasures yet, so you stayed next to him while he opened the lid and peered inside. Cove reached in and pulled out a big orange shell. Oh. Like he hadn't spoken aloud yet, he turned to you and held it up, his eyes shining. I think this one is the best of them. That's my favorite too. I like a different one best. I can show it to you. You can take it. Um, a big orange shell? If it's big, I'm gonna assume it's the biggest one in there, right? Ko smiled at you and you both admired the shell together. It was a giant conch with shades of dark and light orange. If you held it to your ear, you could practically hear the ocean. I found that one last summer when we went to the beach on a picnic. The two of you were still sitting on the floor looking through a collection of beach findings when the doorbell finally rang. Cove jumped, startled by the sound. Do not drop my seashell, please. <clears throat> Since the person hadn't knocked, you figured it was probably Shiloh. He knew where to look for that. Lizzie's friend? You nodded, but that didn't seem to make Cove feel better. It was already obvious that Cove didn't hide his feelings well. He could tell what he was thinking right away. This isn't a good idea. It's just Shiloh, and where would you even go? He's at our only door, and if you go upstairs, he'll find you. Cove glanced around the room, his eyes wide, and finally paused with his gaze locked onto the back of the house. I can go out the window. I don't think you should do that, nor will I think my moms will let you do that. He was already walking towards it. No! Oh! Scrambling to think of something to say, you stepped forward, then paused. Do you want to break your other arm? <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, we, I guess we could just also break our arm, too. Uh, you should probably stay here and not get me in trouble. Even I don't jump out of any windows here, and this is my house. The distance from the first floor living room window isn't wasn't far, but you could tell it made Cove nervous anyways. He touched the cast on his arm. I... 
The wind had clearly released from his sails. I don't want to break any more bones. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> don't be a little punk. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to. Yeah. But I don't want to see him. I don't know him. You teased him. You comforted him. You encouraged him. We are going to comfort him. I get it. This isn't the best way to ever meet Shiloh. Sorry. Thanks. Shiloh poked his head into the living room. It was impossible to know for sure if he'd heard what you've been saying or not, but you guessed that he had. Oh, he's so cute! Look at his little outfit! Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Hi, Calico! And hi, uh, Cove. Cove shot you in an uneasy glance. <laughs> Don't be rude. I'm Shiloh, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. You have a lot of freckles. Uh, right, I do. What are you guys doing? We're looking at shells. Oh, can I do it too? <laughs> yeah. Cove shrugged, then looked back at your box of beach findings. What about that one? Oh, right now we just all go back up to my room. The plan for the afternoon, at least as far as you were concerned, was to sit and look at the beach thing some more. You weren't really in the mood to do much of anything else. This is a scallop shell I found last week. I kept... <laughs> I kept it because it looks neat. I can't remember if I've ever said this on stream, but... Uh, there's a scallop shell that's specifically called a calico scallop shell. Uh, that kid has a lot of sun protection for how many freckles he has. <laughs> is this environmental storytelling? Aren't Can't freckles also just be... Uh, Inherited, like genetic. They're not just caused by the sun, right? It's a pretty color. Kinda like my cast. The beautiful glittering pink did look a little bit like the wrap around his arm. Pink is a nice color. Okay. Dude! <laughs> is it your favorite? Not really. What is? Maybe green or blue. It might be yellow. Oh, those are all cool. Oh, come on. Stop being a little... A little... Punk. I like those colors, too. They're better colors. Not sure how to deal with the suddenly more awkward silence you look back at your shells. Let's keep the conversation going. Awesome! A predisposition for freckles can be inherited from what I understand. The freckles themselves are from the sun or radiation. Ah... Well, he does have a lot of freckles, then. <laughs> like usual, it didn't take long for Shiloh to get fidgety. Yeah, I'm not- I'm not- <laughs> I'm not the curse because we're eight. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say the bad words. Not yet, at least. Lizzie was his favorite. Without her around, Shiloh didn't seem to know what to do with himself. And Cole wasn't like your sister. He wasn't that much like you, either. Is Lizzie coming back? Don't know. No. Oh. Where'd she go? I think she's at the beach. Probably. Is she playing at her park? Her park? Ko's eyes lit up at the mention of the park and he looks towards you. There's a park? Yep, but it's old. Wait till we're 13, then we can whisper the wet. True, we can whisper the bad words. We can say. We can say the S word. Shut up. <gasps> Waiting until step three to say crazy stuff, <laughs> which has become unhinged at step three. <laughs> yep, but it's old. Can you show me? I want to go. He started getting up before you had even answered, and Shiloh jumped up beside him in excitement. Really? You do too, right, Calico? The park is fun. I love it. The park is pretty great. <laughs> no. <laughs> I guess we do like the park. I like the beach better. I'll just say the park is pretty great. Yeah, it's right at the beach, so there- oh, okay. Oh, then I'm more down. It's right at the beach, so there's lots of fun stuff to do, and lots of sand. It has a jungle gym and a bunch of swings. That sounds like it could be cool. So, are we going to find Lizzie? I don't know, I never really wanted to see her. I just want to check the park out. Hey man, that's my sister. 
that drifts without any direction. Shiloh finally turned to you. Okay. He perked up. Both boys wanted to go. It was only fair. After getting permission from your moms, the three of you were ready to head out. It was a short walk to the park. Lizzie had convinced your moms that it was so short, she should always be allowed to walk there by herself. <laughs> Man, Miss Independent. <laughs> when you found her, she was hanging on the jungle gym, swinging back and forth. Hey, Lizzie. Her face lit up when she saw you, her big brown eyes going wide. Calico, Shiloh! Hi! She dropped to the ground and landed with a soft thud in the sand. In a split second, Shiloh had abandoned you two and scrambled over to stand by her. You were used to being left out when it was just the three of you. But now Cove was here! Now we can be both left out. <laughs> you weren't sure if this was an improvement. Who's that? Dang, our sister's cute too. Man, this whole family just, like, it's full of good-looking people. <laughs> it's Cove. He's new. Hi. I remember. Hi, Cove. Oh, look at her little seashell earrings. That's so cute. <clears throat> Welcome to my park. Nobody ever comes to play here, so this is where we get together. She gestured widely with her arms as if to present the area to the newcomer. Well, without interrupting Lizzie's speech, Cove whispered in your ear, quiet enough that the others wouldn't overhear. I thought kids can own places like parks or hills. Hey, don't, don't, don't try. Shut up. <laughs> you couldn't help but laugh a tiny bit. While Lizzie continued talking, you took the chance to kick off your shoes and wriggle your toes through the warm sand. Nice, huh? In this neighborhood, I'm the one who comes up with the ideas. Oh, she's <laughs> literally, she's the leader. She's the leader of our pack. <clears throat> you are? Uh -huh. Yeah, I am. Who else could handle this job? Lizzie is the oldest. By a lot. My mom said you're Calico's age. Yeah. yeah. I thought so. I'm still the only one in this group with double digits. Oh, so she's ten. What about the other kids? Other kids? There aren't any. <laughs> We're the only kids here, and Shiloh is just visiting from another place. Dang. No, like, no kids live here? Not even tourists really bring their kids here. This is the land of ancients. What? <laughs> Be careful that the oldies don't try to steal your youth. Oh, for a second, it looked like you might cry. <laughs> Lizzie, what are you telling him? But something in his eyes shifted, and he looked back at Lizzie. What kind of old people? Like moms and dads or grandparents? Grandparents who don't have kids. They hate kids. Oh, great. <laughs> Why? We haven't done anything. Only some of them don't like kids. Stop saying stuff like that. You're gonna upset him. <laughs> They're really bad. Yeah, Lizzie, stop giving him ideas. You interjected quickly, hoping Cove wouldn't start crying again. He sniffled, his forehead creasing with worry. <laughs> Lizzie was staring Cove down, but Cove wasn't even looking at her anymore. He didn't seem to care that she was there. He went into his own head. Shiloh was the next one to speak, completely unaware of the situation. Um, I met Lizzie and Calico in school. You'll see tons of kids there once summer is over. Oh, so she's just making stuff up? Lizzie. I don't want to go to a new school. I don't want summer to end. Shiloh looked down at to the dirt. <clears throat> He hasn't had much luck striking up conversations with Cove. I like summer vacation a lot, too! All the building tension in the air suddenly vanished when Lizzie laughed. At Shiloh's discomfort at how weird she thought Cove was, at something else entirely, he didn't really know. But she laughed, face scrunching up. <clears throat> Welcome to Sunset Bird, Cove. Take a seat, put up your feet, and get used to it. Ha, uh, that's right. For the rest of the summer, Cove was always there. You saw him more often than Shiloh, and on some days, when she was in a bad mood or busy, you even saw him more than Lizzie. Dang, we become besties. He became a staple of your everyday life, the way sun and lunch and the beach were. That first summer, he hadn't really been interested in him one way or another. He was just kind of a fact of life, someone you met with because he was there. Of course, that was only the start of things. Ooh. Moment select. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so all the DLC is blocked off because I didn't 
buy it, but <clears throat> you can go shopping. Uh, I guess we're playing pretending glow ups. We can have a long day. We can build a sandcastle where we can experience fireflies. I don't really know what shopping can even entail because we're like only eight and we don't have the 20 bucks that Ko's dad wanted to hand off to me. Um, so I feel like either fireflies or a long day would be fun. Let's do a long day. You can probably fit in more things with a long day, right? It was another scorching summer day, the kind where no sooner had you finished one cup of water, you were already filling it up again. Everyone else had something on, so that afternoon it was just you and Shiloh. This didn't happen much, especially since Cove had arrived. Without Lizzie around, Shiloh looked at to you for all the answers. It made you feel... Please, frustrated. Nothing, really. I'm kind of indifferent. I don't need to be the leader. Shiloh went along with whatever you wanted, so he wasn't a bother, but he also wasn't that much fun. You drained yet another drink and frowned at the empty vessel. Your thirst was gone, but you still craved something icy, cold, and refreshing. Something sweet. Something like... Ice cream. <laughs> An ice cream cone. Nothing beat a classic creamy scoop of ice cream on a day like this. There's nothing like that to be found at home. You know that without needing to look. Your moms didn't keep sweets in the house. Outside, there were plenty of places where such goodies could be obtained, but they were shops and demanded payment in exchange for their products. Yeah, we don't have that 20 bucks. Dang it. <laughs> you voiced the predicament aloud. Yeah, maybe Shiloh has money. Though I kind of doubt it if he's younger than us. I want an ice cream cone. Shiloh had been draped over the sofa, perked up. Mmm, that sounds good. We don't have anything like that in the house, and I don't have any money. Oh, let me check if I have any. Shiloh rummaged in his backpack and proudly produced an assortment of coins, plus one stray button. Wow, a button. He set the button aside and counted the coins in neat piles. Just over a dollar. <clears throat> he announced this to Shiloh. He had almost certainly come to the same conclusion, but he'd been watching you expectantly. <laughs> it's not enough. It's a start. Shiloh beamed at you. We'll need to find some more. Okay. The two of you lifted couch cushions, stuck tiny hands down deep crevices in the sofa and under furniture, and scoured the back of drawers. Most of what you found was useless or gross. <laughs> Paper clips, fluffy wisps of dust or sandy crumbs, but every so often one of you would strike silver or bronze and add it to the growing pile of coins. Why do we have that many, that much change in between the couch? Even I don't think I've never found that much change in the couch. <clears throat> Dusty and disheveled from checking every room and squinting into every tiny nook, the two of you finished pooling your finds. Shiloh held his breath as you counted the coins once again. Two dollars, fifty-three cents, and two buttons. You didn't know when the second button had decided to join the party, but you were too pleased with your successful haul to throw it out. Is that enough? You figured he knew the answer without looking to you for confirmation, but the thrill of your success and the reward that would follow cancelled out any other feelings you might have had about that. Yeah! Two dollars and two buttons? Who would say no to that? You can now afford something at the shops. Just one thing, but that was infinitely better than none. Shiloh clapped his hands. Yay! The two of you dashed outside. The promise of sugar buoyed you onto your destination where, breathless but happy, you stared at the overwhelming number of options. You knew what you wanted, but it wasn't just you who had contributed the funds to get the treat. He seemed to notice your pause. I mean, we only contributed, like, the random amount of change in the couch. Like, a whole dollar came from him. Should be his ice cream. Aren't you getting an ice cream cone? Cheryl asked this, though he was entirely separate from the decision rather than someone with a stake in the outcome. Do you mind? Shiloh cocked his head to the side. It was your idea. You should choose. <laughs> We're going to split it. We're even Stevens on this, even though I found what- well, I guess if we found a dollar in the couch, then we are literally even, right? <clears throat> it wasn't fair for you to be the only one to decide when he'd been on- when he'd been a main factor in making this happen. Some of the money came directly from his backpack. Exactly. What do you like? All of them. They're so good. He pressed further. But what do you really like? 
popsicles or ice creams? Which is your favorite? What's your favorite, guys? <coughs> I am... Um, I would typically prefer to have the ice cream and the bowl, because I don't like to get messy. <laughs> and then I'll ask for, like, the cone on top. Like, you know, sitting on top where the, the ice cream's in the bowl, and then you put the cone on top. Oh, it's so hard to pick, I don't know. Frustrated, you cut to the heart of the matter. You want me to choose? Yeah! And that was that, and you got the dessert you wanted originally, and hoped Shiloh would actually like it too. Finally, the reward for all your hard work was in your hands. You lapped at the soft ice cream, the sweetness perked you up. You held it out to Shiloh so you could take a turn. He shook his head. What? No! That's your dollar! He didn't want any? After everything he did to help get it? That was weird. But you accepted the offer. You tried to include Shiloh. You hesitated. You're gonna keep pressing him. I'm a bowl enjoyer. Yeah, bowl enjoyers. Get Keep your hands nice and clean. And then you still get to enjoy the yummy ice cream. That's a win-win for me. <coughs> Even if Shiloh said it was okay, every story you'd ever seen on TV or read in a book said that sharing was caring. Yeah, that's right, sharing is caring. You stood your ground, even as the treat started to trickle dangerously towards your fingers. It's only fair that you have some. We both bought it. But you want it more than I do, and getting to play was a lot of fun already, so you can have it. That's more fair. You held it out to him. I want you to have some even more than I want to finish it. So eat your part. <laughs> I'm just forcing it onto him. Take it. Take the ice cream. Relenting, Shiloh took the treat and gave it a taste. His eyes lit up. It's really good. Thank you. He smiled, pleased with your good deed. <laughs> we feel better now that he's had some. You picked, you picked the best one. Did he mean that? Shiloh was always nice no matter what happened. Even if he hated it, you knew he wouldn't say so. Maybe he thought it was gross and that's the real reason why he didn't want to take some. You had no idea. You studied him as he ate a little more. He had every appearance of enjoying himself. Still weird. The two of you began to head back home as he ate. You walked side by side on the shore in silence, but your thoughts kept drifting to the boy beside you. Why didn't he speak up for himself? It was almost as if Shiloh didn't know how to say what he felt or was too afraid to. He figured that was his problem and didn't care. Are you scared of me? He thought that was kind of sad. Are we friends? Hmm. I don't think he's scared of us. Because he kind of just follows along with uh, Lizzie too. I think it's just his personality, but... Yeah, because it's just a problem we don't care. Um, I think we're friends, but... We'll, we'll go with this one. That's just, I think it's just his personality. Shiloh was the only person who acted that way around you, so it was him rather than something wrong with you. You could ask him about it, but if you couldn't give an opinion on something like what treat to get, then he wasn't going to open up about this. It's true. Shiloh made you unsure about setting a label on the experience of spending the afternoon with just him. There had been good times, and there had been confusing ones. You were positive of one thing, at least. The treat was delicious, and that was nice. <clears throat> the sun was low on the horizon, and you returned to your neighborhood. There you spotted two very familiar figures up ahead, Lizzie and Cove. You opened your mouth to make your presence known to them, just as you saw the tears on Cove's face. You walk straight over, Shiloh at your heels. Oh no, why is he crying again? Once there, you... Defended Cove. Took a moment to make a joke. Accused <laughs> of causing trouble. Carefully asked about what happened. I feel like Lizzie did something, but she looks kind of upset too, so... <laughs> what what eight-year-olds care about the labels of a hand? <laughs> these ones. These ones do. Without a time machine, the only way you were going to find out was by asking the witnesses. Lizzie might have done something, but she could have been in the wrong place at the wrong time, or even come to Cove's aid. You wanted to hear the story. Cove, what happened? Calico, I got yelled at. <laughs> what are we? <laughs> Calico, I got yelled at. <laughs> He took a deep, steadying breath. 
some grandparents got mad at me. Oh, sorry. Lizzie jerked her head in the direction of a nearby house. Your heart sunk. You knew exactly what had happened. Every year, the same mean old couple rented out that condo for the summer. You, Lizzie, and Shiloh knew to stay away from them, but Cove couldn't have. They're like that with everyone. Even your mom struggled to find anything nice to say about them, but the elderly pair particularly took offense to kids. Kawako, I got yelled at. Go fight the mean old people. <laughs> yeah, Lizzie said. Lizzie drew herself up at that. She looked pointedly in your direction. <laughs> yeah, I was helping. She's probably like, I know you were thinking that I did this. <laughs> That's cool. Is there anything I can do? No, I'm just gonna stay away. Or you could teach them a lesson. There was a devilish glint in her eyes, Lizzie. <laughs> I love you, I like the way you think. But also, don't get us into more trouble. What? You should ding dong ditch them. Go ring the doorbell and run. It'll be great because they're so slow. <laughs> Lizzie, <laughs> they'll never catch you. That's dumb. I don't want to go near them ever again. <gasps> Lizzie, stop it! Cove glared, but didn't take the bait. Lizzie turned to you. You're not a chicken, are you? Oh no, I'm not gonna bait him. <laughs> or we can just do it ourselves, because we live here. You thought they deserved worse? <laughs> oh my god. These eight-year-olds are, like, relentless. <laughs> I just got yelled at, you should ding-dong ditch. Or worse. <laughs> he looked at the house. Behind those closed doors lurked two beings, rich in years but poor in patience. Maybe they deserved retaliation, maybe they didn't, but that punishment would be coming from you. Yeah, we're only eight. It was safer to stay far away from them. You could live without the hassle. I'm not doing it either. Another chicken for the coop. This is a hen house now. Well, why don't you go do it, Lizzie? If we're chickens, you're a lizard, Lizzie. <laughs> she wagged her tongue at his face. Still better than a bird brain. Chick, chick, chicken. The condo door opened, revealing one of the two culprits. The old man's wizened face was set in a scowl, which was to say he looked exactly like he always did when you saw him. Maybe that was his normal face. It just stuck that way. What are you kids doing loitering out- Oh, wait. What are you kids doing loitering outside my house? Or maybe he was just always in a terrible mood. Nothing. Nothing. He repeated the word as if it was the greatest crime anyone could commit. Nothing good more like get lost. It wasn't as if he owned the space outside the house, but Cove's eyes, still red from his earlier tears, were wide and you thought it would be best to he heed the old man's command. Lizzie took off, with Shiloh immediately trailing after her without so much as a glance back in your direction. So much for your friendship. We mean friendship, that's our sister. <laughs> Bro. You waved your arm at Cove, summoning him to follow you, and ran after Lizzie. The old man's haulers propelled you all from the street to the sanctity of the hill. Only once you were safe did you notice the stitch in your chest and the ache of your legs. You flopped down, the blades of grass tickling your face. Lizzie, who had taken the lead in the end, was already lazing on the ground. The four of you took a moment to catch your breath and enjoy the feeling of cool grass against your skin. Oh. Hey, Cove. Cove lifted his head. I told you there were mean grandparents around here. <coughs> Cove rolled his eyes and decided this wasn't dismissive enough and rolled his whole body away from your sister. <laughs> Lizzie chose to ignore his response and started chatting to Shiloh, who eagerly joined in the conversation. In the back of your mind, you knew you'd be second fiddle again to Shiloh once Lizzie came around. It always went like that. And it was fine, you thought. You still felt a little sad after how much time you spent together today. Yeah, it was always annoying. It's a bit sad, you know. You had been hoping the two of you might have become closer, but you had to let it go. He was happy where he was. Yeah, he, Lizzie's just his favorite and will always be, will always just exist as a connection to Lizzie. <laughs> 
You closed your eyes, laid on your side, and relaxed. Some time passed with you like that. It felt good to take a real break. You moved onto your back with a small smile and looked at the darkening sky. The blanket of clouds reminded you of a thick th throw you curled under on cold rainy days. You wondered if the clouds would be as soft. They lazily floated on by, splitting from each other, merging and morphing into new shapes. Ooh. Um... You saw cloud shapes. I'm gonna see a dolphin. Because <clears throat> the sea is always on my mind. You saw a dolphin leaping through the sky. You nudged Cove and pointed to it. Look, a dolphin! Cove joined you in gazing skywards. Yeah, I see it. Really? No, but I like dolphins. Hey. He chuckled at your reaction. Oh. All the sun's light faded from the sky and the moon rose higher. Lizzie got to her feet, dusting strands of grass from her bare legs, and surveyed her surroundings. The ocean, visible from the crest of the hill, beckoned with every sweep of the tide. Let's go to the beach! There was no argument from the other two. Shiloh was still Shiloh, and Cove would never say no to going to the shore. He was a child of the sea. You are, am also a child of the sea. Uh, yep. So you eagerly, blah, blah, you eagerly joined the others in descending the hill down to the water. You stepped onto the sand for the second time that day, but it felt different at night. The beach was nearly quiet at this hour. Abandoned sand castles and footsteps in the sand, too big to belong to any of you, were the only indication of how busy it had been hours earlier. The four of you kicked shoes off and removed socks and walked along the water's edge. The waves tickled your feet. I wonder what would happen if you tried to take a bath in the ocean. Shampoo and everything. That would be bad for the fish. I didn't say anyone would do it. Jeez, you don't have to be serious about everything. You're the one who asked what would happen. That is what would happen. It hurt the fish. Uh, I like bubble baths at home. They're a lot of fun. Me too. Bubble baths are luxurious. You're eight. Or no, you're ten. What would you know about lux luxury? <laughs> you never heard Lizzie use that word before. Mommy loves to have bubbles in her bath. She'll turn the lights off and have candles. I'm gonna do that next time. Man, Lizzie. Hey, when's your mom coming to pick you up anyway? Not for a while. She's busy. What about your dad? How come you never talk about him? Nobody does. Don't you know you're supposed to ask something like that? Oh, don't you know you're not supposed to ask something like that? Why would somebody want to talk about something they never talk about? You kept your eyes on the ground, watching your toes get swallowed up by waves. Even if Shiloh never seemed upset when this topic came up, it made you feel awkward just for having both of your moms. It's okay. I'm like Lizzie and Calico. I don't have a dad. Um, but I don't have two moms. I just have one. She's really great. Oh, sorry. I only have one now, too. My mom isn't here. She's back home. Just my dad and me. Aw, oh, I never had a dad or anything, so don't feel bad. Oh, so I don't feel bad. It's really sad that your mom is gone. Wow, we all just... <laughs> this is why we're friends. We all can sense the trauma. <laughs> Cove nodded. Oh my god, no! We are not pairing our parents- we're not shipping our parents together. Uh, even if they're all different, something about our parents are all good to us, because they're doing their best. Yeah. Cove couldn't muster a response. You don't think he truly disagreed, though. The silence broke with a splash as Lizzie kicked in your direction. Cold water and sodden sand splattered against your legs. Friends with kids and broken home simulator. Yeah, just like real life. Lizzie giggled, foot still outstretched from the kick. Cove joined in, striking the incoming waves to make a splash of his own. Shiloh scurried out of Cove's spray zone with a grin. <laughs> you retaliated. Use your foot to smack the water pooling around you, sending an arc of sea foam playing back onto your sister. You laughed as she sp Fluttered, some of the salty seawater having landed in her mouth. She spat it out. Yuck. Lizzie chased you, intent on revenge. You dashed up and down the coast, tanking it in turns to be the predator and the prey, as well as joining forces to take down Shiloh or Cove. Alliances were silently forged and wordlessly broken. 
Everything was for a game and war. Between eight-year-olds. Ah! Shiloh's brief exclamation was drowned by the biggest splash yet, caused by him falling face first onto the ground. That would have been bad enough without the wave that followed cascading over his prone body. Shiloh sat up, shaking his head like a dog coming in from the rain, as you all hurried over to check on him. His hair was plastered to his head and his soaked clothes clung. If there was any part of him that was still dry, you couldn't see it. That was crazy! Are you okay? Yeah, my foot got stuck and I fell over. Way to go, Shiloh, you dumbo. Hey, be nice. Be nice. We're offering to help pick him up. Shiloh didn't take your outstretched hand. After a moment, you dropped it. Lizzie was too busy snickering to notice and held her hand out to Shiloh, too. He reached over and took it. Slowly, he started to pull himself from the ground. Wow. Okay. Then he slipped on the slick sand, dragging him and Lizzie down just in time for another wave to hit. The water rolled over them. Yeah, that's what you get, Lizzie. <laughs> ah, sorry. What were the odds of that happening twice in a row? You thought they must be low. But there's no way Shiloh would do something like that on purpose than pretend it was an accident, especially not to Lizzie. Even if your relationship with Shiloh felt unclear, he did at least like her a lot. Lizzie was his favorite, right? Smiling boldly, Lizzie extracted herself from the ground and wiped a streak of sand from her cheek. She didn't intend to let this embarrass her. Shiloh got up again as well, this time without incident. He still looked like a drowned puppy, but that didn't stop Cove laughing at the two of them. But that, it was time to call it a day. Felt like a lot happened. The four of you made the journey back home, leaving a trail of wet footsteps and sand in your wake. Damp clothes may have weighed down some of the group, but your spirits were high. Your arms swung side to side as a cool breeze flowed past. Your moms were outside, chatting to Cove's dad. We're back! Your mom's faces fell as they took in the state you were all in, ranging from messy to soaked. Elizabeth, is that all you have to say for yourself? You brought half the beach back with you. They certainly did. What's Marigold going to do when she comes home to get Shiloh? Is that how you want him to be for the long drive home? Cold and filthy? Lizzie's expression turned sulky over the scolding. Being the oldest could be fun, but it also meant she was the first to get in trouble when something went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Holden, on the other hand, chuckled as he ruffled Coe's matted hair. You been out making memories, Bucko? I'm glad you had a good time with your friends. Cove used his slightly moist cast arm to push his dad off. Mr. Holden's eyes widened when he noticed even that had gotten wet. Now he was worried, too. <laughs> we are living in an alternate universe. Everything is fine. Everyone is safe. Eight-year-olds, they can just wander around and nobody cares, apparently. I think they could have found a less risky way to spend time and had just as much fun. That might be right. Kids, what can you do? Come on, Cove, let's go get you cleaned up and dried off. We wouldn't want that cast to have to be reset. Cove winced at the thought. Okay. That a boy. Mr. Holden casually bent down and plucked Cove up from the ground, ultimately holding Cove against his chest. Sand was already transferring from Cove onto him, but that didn't seem to bother Mr. Holden. Cove protested being carried, but only got a reassuring pat on the back for his trouble. Take care. Good night, Cove. Thank you for the talk, Cliff. Night, Pascal family. And Shiloh, too. Fine, fine. Well, we'd better do what we can to fix you guys up, too. Come on, everybody inside. I want you to march straight to the downstairs bathroom. Uh. <laughs> yes, Mom. Okay, Lizzie's mom. Don't worry about stopping to wipe your feet on the mat this time. That won't do much good tonight. Sitting on an old beach towel your mommy had found, you waited in the hall. Until you were less sandy, you weren't allowed to go to your room or walk around the house. I feel like this is a common occurrence, like, for any kid who's ever gone to the beach. You're just, like, forced to stay on the beach towel or sit on the beach towel and touch nothing else <laughs> until you're dry and clean. But you did get to eat a sandwich for dinner there. It felt like an indoor picnic. Had it, been it had been decided that Shiloh would wash first and borrow some of your clothes. He was already finished and packed away in his mom's car. Miss, Miss Fields had come to collect him a little while ago. It was a bit of a funny experience seeing him without that hat on for once. Lizzie, being much more soaked than you, got to go in the tub next. It wasn't a bubble bath as she had hoped. 
This was a no fun allowed cleanup session. At least that's what she claimed. Not much longer and it would be your turn. When the bath was done, you'd have to go right to bed. After a day like this, though, you were glad there weren't going to be any further events. Drifting off to sleep sounded like a great idea. Oh yeah, a summer day, like, when you're just like out all day under the sun and then you finally get home and you get to go to bed. That's like, the best. <laughs> now we got so many more things to choose from. I guess we can save the fireflies for last. We go shopping now. Cove's dead. Come back before it gets dark, alright, sport? The familiar voice drifted across the street and drew your attention away from the snail you'd been watching inch slowly across the pavement. Cove waited in front of his dad, pushing his green hair back off his face from where the breeze was blowing it over his glasses. He looked to be paying only a mild attention amount of attention as he was being handed a few slips of green paper. Wow, allowance money. He reminded you of when you'd first met Mr. Holden, although he's probably not paying Cove to be friends with himself. Cove's dad seemed to feel your gaze somehow, or maybe you made a noise because a second later his eyes were on you. He waved you over with a smile. He looked happy to see you, but you still felt a little weird for getting caught. Gotta learn how to be more sneaky. Sneaky. You brushed your hands together for f to free them of sand, then jogged over to join the two. Good to see you again. What excitement are you up to today, Calico? I was looking at a snail. Stuff. <laughs> I found a really cool snail across the road. He was slimy with funny eyes and a nice shell. Mr. Holden grinned at your enthusiasm. After you finished answering the question, Mr. Holden's attention returned to Cove, who was preoccupied with folding the bills he had into a tiny rectangle. Sounds fun. You know, Cove was about to hit the stores by the beach. Why don't you go with him? You shrugged. Cove was in the process of making a similar motion. You didn't have anything else to do, and you hadn't been to the stores in a few days. Maybe there was something new to look at. Maybe. Is that okay? I was going by myself, but I guess it is. You don't have to. Great. I'm sure you guys will have loads of fun. <coughs> Mr. Holden reached into his pocket and pulled out a leather wallet filled with money. He found it odd, since your mom's only ever seemed to have cards in theirs. Wow, is he a cash-only man? Our moms are anti-cash. Here. He leaned in to pass a crisp ten to Cove, giving him a wink and a whisper. Get something for your friend, too. Sure. That's my boy. Cove's dad ruffled his son's hair as he was straining back up, the bill in his hand still held out towards the green-haired boy. Take care! Cove accepted the bill after a second and slipped it into his pocket. Then with one last nod to his dad, he turned and started walking. He followed after him, intrigued at the possibilities this, I this outing might bring. I cannot read. <laughs> I'm a. I can't read. Cove strayed towards the, the gentle tide creaming up the sand, and you fell into a place beside him. It was a nice day. The sun was shining and there weren't many clouds in the sky, though the wind coming off the ocean kept it from being too hot. He took in a deep breath. Enjoying the scent of salt and ocean air. Mm. When you looked at Cove, he was dragging his feet through the sand a little, and you slowed down to wait for him. His eyes searched the ground intently. Are you looking for snails? Let's ask if he's looking for shells, because I know he was jealous of my shell collection. Cove startled a little at the sound of your voice and mumbled a sort of. <coughs> if you see any, you can let me know. You could manage that. You dropped your view to the sand, walking carefully so you didn't step on any. You were good at finding shells. You had a lot of them at home and always found new ones whenever you visited the beach. The comforting sound of the waves filled with silence, uh, filled the silence with pleasant white noise, and you played a little game with yourself as you walked along, getting as close to the water as possible without getting wet. It resulted in you having to run up the sand quickly when a wave rushed in more than a few times, and although Cove threw a few glances your way, he didn't say a word. Oh, are we just doing the, the like, what's it called? The like parallel play? You just don't interact with each other, but you just do your own thing. Yeah, why are we going to the shops? Or, I mean, I guess we're walking the shops through the beach. I need a new sand pail. Yeah? What happened to your old one? 
Ove narrowed his eyes, seeming to think deeply for a second. Whoa. It disappeared. What? Really? Ko ducked his head down, placing his fingers behind his back. It didn't seem like he was going to continue, so you nudged his arm. How did that happen? Well... Ko opened his mouth and shut it again, considering. Hmm. I took it to the beach one day. Uh-huh. When I got home, it wasn't there. It wasn't anywhere. You left it there? Nope, it wasn't at the beach when I got back. Then you lost it. It disappeared. So... What about you? What do you do out here? I don't come to the beach a lot. I like swimming. I like looking at the fish. I like to build cancels, sand castles or nothing. I like looking at fish. They don't like me, so they always swim away if I get close. But they're pretty before that. Cool. Starfish are fun. They aren't going anywhere even if you touch them. A small laugh escaped you. That's true. Once you reached the shopping area, the noise level grew exponentially. No longer just waves and footsteps, but the chatter of people enjoying the lovely summer day. The call of birds trying to find bits of food left behind, and lots of salespeople trying to get attention. You sniffed the air as you walked beside Cove. You could still smell the ocean, but there were other scents now, too. Pizza, pretzels, hot donuts. It's nice. Who doesn't like the smell of food? The energy surrounding the area seemed to fill you, and there was a bounce in your step as you began looking at all the familiar sights. There were so many things to do, you didn't know where to begin. You looked at Cove, hoping he was just, ex just as excited as you were. Cove was glancing from one side of the street to the other with a look in his aquamarine eyes that you couldn't quite work out. What's that? Cove pointed to a large crowd of people gathered near a few tables with large, colorful umbrellas blooming from their middles. You couldn't see past the adults who were blocking the way, but you knew there must be something worth seeing. Without another word, the two of you hurried over to see what all the commotion was about. The Amazing Alexander! Feast your eyes on the amazing Alexander! In the center of the crowd was a man with a tall hat and a funny green coat that had three long tails. There was a little table next to him with a cloth hanging over it that read, The Amazing Alexander, in glittery golden script. Why tell people his name if it's already on the sign? Cove hummed with understanding, then turned to walk away just as the Amazing Alexander began shuffling a deck of cards. I want to see the show! Ko glanced back at the man. He then briefly lifted his arms up off his sides before returning them to place. Alright. He may not be impressed, but at least he didn't ditch you. You grinned, waving for him to follow you as you raced back to stand in the crowd. With that, it began. The magic man pulled one card out of the deck, showing it to the curious onlookers. It was a four of diamonds. Watch closely. You did, squeezing through a few of the adult onlookers to get a better view. Suddenly, the man snapped his fingers and the card just disappeared. <gasps> Whoa! The amazing Alexander, who had earned his title, turned his head and looked directly at you. He reached out with a kind smile. To me? What's this behind your ear? <laughs> Tell me. This had to be going somewhere and you needed to find out. He smelled like popcorn and candy when he stepped closer. It was great. And... I hope all magicians smell like popcorn and candy. He felt a tug, and then he pulled the four of diamonds out from behind your ear. Whoa. He didn't know that it couldn't really have come from your ear, but you still didn't get how he'd done it. There was light applause from the crowd, and the man gave a deep bow. This is for you! The magician plucked a pair of balloons from a clump of them tied down to his table. Both were in the shape of a dolphin instead of being a normal circle. Wow, cute! And one for your friend, too. Thank you for being my assistant. Wow! Now you were really grateful he chose you. After that, he went to someone else in the crowd. Pick a card. Any card. My uncle does that every time he visits. Not the balloons. The stuff with cards. Ko spoke plainly while reaching over to take the dolphin that had been designated for him. <laughs> Ko was just ruining the fun. He's Come on. <laughs> you wondered if Cove's whole family was magic. I mean, he's got green hair, so... Um...
At least you had a fun time. Go, don't ruin the fun for me. They'll take the spoils from the encounter with Alexander but not appreciate his tricks? That isn't a very good attitude. At least you had a fun time. You wondered if the amazing Alexander knew how to make people disappear as well as cards. <laughs> Man. Eight-year-old Calico trying to make Go disappear. Crowd started to clear some and you notice on the side there was a whole rack of brightly colored kaleidoscopes on display. Ooh. Um... The Rubik's Cube, a Magic 8-Ball, or a Kaleidoscope. I want the Magic 8-Ball. Personally. Tell me something. Oh, Cove, check this out! Tell me my future. Or if whatever I ask. You shifted your balloon string to the other hand so you could hold it up in front of you. Then you thought of a question in your mind, shaking the ball and hearing some kind of liquid slosh around inside it. Once you had given it a good shake, you held it upright waiting for the answer to appear. Concentrate and ask again. You wrinkled your nose and set the magic eight ball back on the rack. It wasn't the answer you were hoping for. Yeah, I wanted something cool. Followed Cove around to the other side of the stall. He just went under the awning, careful of his own floating dolphin, and you joined him. And... <laughs> I'm usually one to make sure that people are all enjoying themselves in an outing. Otherwise, it's not really worth being there, right? Cove didn't answer straight away, and after a few more moments, you thought he wasn't going to say anything at all. A little. When Cove moved towards some stalls nearby, you follow beside him. Oh, look at how cute! While Cove looked at the sand pails, you were drawn to a table with colorful keychains laid out on it. They were sewn in the shape of sea creatures, and there was a plaque that read, Handmade, standing proudly in front. There were lots of different types. You saw a dolphin, a shark, a crab, and a turtle. Ooh. Um. Personally, I think the crab looks kind of goofy. How about the crab? You, your hand stopped on the crab. Claws raised and a tiny smile on its face. It had big eyes and little legs, and the fabric was smooth when you picked it up. You had seen a few crabs at the beach before, though they usually scuttled away before you got the chance to look at them closely. You liked the idea of having a crab all of your own, even if it was just a soft animal. You were instantly enamored. Checking the price, though, your heart fell. Six dollars? You didn't know much about money, but you thought this was a lot to spend on one thing, and to think that Ko's dad was willing to give us 20 to 8-year-old Calico, that's probably like... I don't know. <laughs> probably not realizing the worth of $20. You really had more than a $5 bill to your name. Crab time. Crab time. Is that what you want? Huh? Oh, it's $6. I didn't bring any money. It's fine. Really? Really? Are you sure? Hooray! You don't have to. I don't want you to get it for me. I always double ask. Because, you know, I won't turn down an offer, but I will make sure that it's really okay. Bob took the keychain from your hands and that was that. He was holding a small yellow bucket for himself too. Oh wow, he already got his bucket. My dad told me to. You beamed, excited at the idea of displaying the keychain somewhere in your room. It was nice of Cove's dad to let Cove buy something for you too. You had to remember to thank him the next time you saw him. After Cove paid, the two of you stepped out of the store side by side, your balloon dolphins knocking together and spiraling around in the air. You watched Cove hold up his new pail to his face, examining it thoroughly. Hey Cove. Yeah? Why is your dad always giving people money? <laughs> Thanks for the keychain. Well, I mean, it's your dad's money. But we should say thank you to Cove, too. Oh, come on, Cove. Thank my dad. Cove looked further down the street where different food carts were lined up. He rested his non-cast arm over his stomach, and just as he did, yours let out a light growl. You hadn't eaten since breakfast, and after all of this wandering around, you were definitely ready for some lunch. Let's get some food. Yeah. You two wandered around a short while, looking at all the delic delicacies that were available. 
Everything looked delicious, and as the different smells, both sweet and salty, wafted over to you, your stomach growled even louder. After passing up hot dogs, snow cones, ice cream, and pizza, you both agreed on pretzels. Ooh. <laughs> Feel and showing love with money. <laughs> Sad. But maybe, uh, that's part of, like, the gift giving, right? The love language, gift giving love language. <clears throat> also, salty pretzels by the beach sounds bomb. But I think I would want something sweet to be paired with it, just so we have a nice balance. Cove got some. Oh, yeah. You see, what I what I tell you. Cove got something sweet and cinnamony, and you, you got a sweet, sweet pretzel. Uh, I also want something sweet. One with chocolate. <clears throat> You licked your lips hungrily as the vendor handed your pretzel over, ready to take a big bite. It had tiny marshmallows on it, and it was dripping with chocolate, just how you liked it. Whoa, that sounds good, actually. Your moms didn't like you to eat too much sugar, but this was a special occasion. You found an empty table close enough to the beach that the grit of the sand made terrible noises when you dragged the chairs out to sit down. Actually, I just realized, because I mentioned, we haven't eaten since breakfast, and now we're just eating, like, sweets. <laughs> a very kid thing to do. Let's have lunch. Yeah! And then we just eat, like, ice cream. <laughs> These balloons are gonna make it hard to eat. Cove placed his bucket on the table as he stared at his still balled-up hand that was wrapped around the string. You opened your mouth to agree before an idea hit you. I know. After carefully placing your pretzel somewhere it wouldn't get sandy, you tugged the balloon dolphin out of Cove's hand and tied it in a delicate bow around his wrist. Cove bounced his arm up and down in place, testing the stability of your knot. After watching the balloon jostle around but remain attached, he smiled satisfied. There, now do mine! He repeated the ritual. Cove struggled somewhat with the cast restricting his fingers on one hand and a string already tangled around the other. Okay. Hmm, got it. The two of you spent a moment admiring your handiwork, both hands now free to allow easy munching on your pretzels. You bit into the doughy treat, savoring the taste on your tongue with a smile as you looked out over the ocean. After a time you finished your pretzel, you were done before Cove. It was boring not having anything to do. You pulled on the string of your balloon to bring it down to your level, then you held the dolphin in your hands, manipulating it to make it look like it was jumping through the air. If you turned a face towards the beach, it almost looked like it was swimming in the waves like a real dolphin. A laugh came from your side. When you glanced back at Cove, he had left the remaining part of his pretzel on the wrapper and he was gripping on to his dolphin too. Mine's name is Meriwether, he's the prince of dolphins. Splash, the, they star in movies. Cherry, she's actually an alien. <laughs> Mine's name is Sam, they're just a regular dolphin. I know with since it's we're we're trying to go well i mean i tried to do alien themed week which we couldn't do so here's the tiny bit of alien that we can get out of this game <laughs> my name mine's name is cherry she's actually an alien when no one is looking she transforms back into her true alien self she has purple skin and 10 eyes you sighed wishing you could meet a real life alien what's yours Cove considered this question, placing the balloon against the table and resting his free arm across it in contemplation. Alien. A mayo. It's... With a loud pop, the dolphin exploded into ribbons. Oh no! Oh no. No! Don't cry! Stop! Stop crying! For a second, all Cove did was gape in shock like you, and his cheeks puffed up, squinting his eyes, and you saw tears start to glisten. You know, we can get Alexander give him another... another dolphin. We're gonna give him our alien, because he, he bought us the keychain and the pretzel. You could have my balloon instead if you want it. Cove looked over at you, frowning. I don't want yours. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh. You felt bad for Cove, but we're secretly glad. You really liked the little dolphin and weren't too eager to give it up. Cove spent the rest of the outing sniffling and didn't say much else. Ah, uh, come on. You could have taken my dolphin. Passing a Cove's balloon was the last major event of your adventure. 
In the end, the two of you headed back late that afternoon. He separated on the beach, and while Cove went straight home with his brand new sand pail in hand, you decided to sit for a while. You watched the waves and the sunset, fiddling with your new keychain. Another summer day was drawing to a close. It had been nice, for the most part. Hopefully there wouldn't be any tears next time. Cove! Man, we have three more. And then summer ended. One sweltering summer day, you were in your living room with Cove, listening to the sounds of the birds chattering outside the window while you lay across the rug, the blah blah blah, the rug on the floor. Cove's dad had dropped him off earlier, and your moms had left the two of you along with Lizzie to play amongst yourselves. It had been too hot to go outside in the afternoon, at least according to mommy. So your sister was starting to get impatient waiting for her golf class that evening. Wow, she's taking golf classes? What the... The three of you had had trouble finding something fun to do. The beach and the playground were off limits, and you felt that it was too warm for anything like playing with your fuzzy toy animals. Then suddenly, a light came to Lizzie's big brown eyes and her smile spread wide across her face. Having an idea gave her a new wave of energy. Since we're stuck inside, we should be adults. They don't play outdoors anyways. They're always inside and telling everybody they're too busy to play. And that the unfortunate truth. <laughs> True, why? I said why, and it'll be fun, duh. What do they do inside that we don't, besides use the phone a lot? Excluding a small huff, Lizzie decides to ignore Cove. Calico, what do you think? Do you want to? Cove said it, it doesn't sound fun. I think we could come up with something else. I don't know. I want to. Yeah, rich family golf classes? What about me? What am I doing? Come up with something else. Being an adult is boring. But that's what I'm going to do, and it's not as fun when I play pretend adults by myself. Do you do that a lot? What's it to you? Looking at Lizzie, it seemed Cove felt he could understand where she was coming from, and he sighed. Do you really not want to play, Calico? It was clear he wanted some way out, but still felt guilty about it. <laughs> okay, fine. If you want to play, we play. I hope this is as fun as you're promising it'll be. Lizzie looked at you deadly serious. It's the most exciting idea I've had all week. Satisfied that neither of you were about to bail on her, Lizzie thought over her options while you watched. After a few seconds, she clapped her hands together and beamed, apparently having settled on something without asking either of you. Okay, okay I'm gonna be a professional golfer. Calico, you and Cove can be a beach volleyball player, a gymnast, or a tennis player. Why <laughs> can't we pick anything we want? Yeah, Lily, why are you picking for us? Because I have a fun idea, that's why. And we have to play sports as adults. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but there's other kinds of sports, too. It isn't the same. What do you think, Calico? Don't those choices sound super cool? You want to be that, huh? I kind of like this. It really doesn't. Huh, it sounds like a blast. Is there anything else we can be? Hmm. I want more options. Lizzie stomped a foot on the ground. Nope, come on, just a sigh already. Knowing Lizzie wouldn't let this go anytime soon, you sighed. Cove was not impressed with Lizzie's attitude, though he didn't bother talking more about it for now. He thought over the list of possibilities. Beach volleyball, gymnast gymnastics, or tennis. Out of all of them, you'd prefer to play... Well, we're by the beach, so I'd rather play beach volleyball. If you couldn't spend the afternoon at the beach for real, then you might as well pretend you were there. Exactly. You could even wear your swimsuit to make it seem more realistic, although Lizzie probably wouldn't let you run off and do that now that she had you to hear. Yes, that was clearly the top option. I want to be a volleyball player. How about you, Cove? I was going to pick volleyball. Lizzie threw her hands in the air, making an annoyed sound. You guys can't be the same thing, that's not how it works! <laughs> you didn't say that. The rule was picking from the list. You can't keep adding more. Lizzie looked at the two of you, then shook her head, resigned to losing this battle, but not the war. Fine. You're both volleyball players, but you're on the same team because there's only one. Lizzie's ponytail bobbed and she proudly stretched her arms wide. The Olympic team. What? We're Olympic athletes who just, completed in, who just competed in the Olympics. 
Cove didn't seem at all that impressed with the announcement. He made a face and adjusted the glasses on his nose. That's really specific. Uh, that's what makes it fun. Anyway. Lizzie marched back and forth in front of the both of you, getting lost in her own imagination. I won all the gold medals and people are calling me the next Mickey Wright. Who's that? Lizzie stopped on the spot and turned on him, her brown eyes shining with impatience. Doesn't matter if you know who she is. It's a golf thing. You guys won medals too. Your team plays that silver. It's more real if we're not all first place. Okay, Lizzie. <laughs> Silver sucks, I don't want silver. <laughs> hey, we can do better than silver. It's true. He pouted at Lizzie, unhappy with the decision. Calico's right. <laughs> Lots of people lose at the Olympics. Them's the breaks. Then you're the one who did, not me. Lizzie looked taken aback by Cove's declaration, as though the thought of her losing was completely absurd. She's never had that thought once in her life. No way! It wouldn't make sense. I'm already practicing my golf game. She took a golfing stance to make her point, pretending to swing her club and hit an invisible ball. So what kind of house do you want to live in? Hope hadn't changed his mind about winning, but thinking about where he'd live as an adult appealed to him, apparently, because he looked back at Lizzie with some of the anger fading. I'm going to live on the beach. Lizzie made a face at him, poking out her tongue. That's kind of boring. We already have that. But what's wrong with living on the beach, dude? No, not like the normal houses here with the street on it, right on the sand, by the water. Just like that, all the tension was back. He hadn't even had a chance to choose where he would want to live. That's not very fun or smart, Cove. You can't live on a bunch of sand and shells. But I want to, and I will. This is very... <laughs> the things that kids argue about. Cove narrowed his eyes at Lizzie, even though she stood half a head taller than him. You didn't give out a list of things to pick from this time, so I'm picking that. Why are we even playing pretend if we can't imagine anything? Dang, he got a point. Well, I'm gonna live in a mansion far away from here and far away from you. One with an indoor pool and a place to practice my award-winning golfing. <laughs> How come you were yelling about mine when your idea is even more impossible? Jeez. Hank. <laughs> Brutal. Lizzie's face flushed red, her hands balling into fists at her sides. It is not impossible, and it's better than yours. Disagreements always seemed to crop up when the two of them were together, and you always felt like you were stuck in the middle. But when it came to the topic at hand, this time you thought... Mm. <laughs> Being on the beach is way cooler. Who wouldn't want to live on the beach? It'd be really great. You could have windows made from driftwood and seashell wind chimes. Ugh. Co granted you a small a small nod, which was a rare amount of acknowledgement from him. You didn't think it was that big of a deal. You can swim whenever you want if you live on the beach. We can still swim anytime we want from where we live now. Being a little closer doesn't mean anything. Says you. The two of them scowled at each other. You're being so unreasonable. You you I don't get what you want. This game doesn't make sense. It does. You have to be realistic. I said that. But you're not. You had no idea what to do to make them stop at this point. It seemed like the two of them would just keep working each other up as long as they could. Nothing you'd said so far had kept them from being mad. Thankfully, like a greeting card angel, Mom walked into the room. Bless, Mother. Help. Lizzie rushed to her, hanging onto the hem of her shirt and poking out her tongue at Cove. Lizzie, Calico, it's time to get ready to go. Sorry you have to leave already, Cove. Their mommy said she'll walk you home so you won't be left in the cold. Cove was still glaring at Lizzie, his face flushed red with anger. I can go by myself. But without giving mom a chance to stop him, Cove stood up and stalked out of the room, shoulders drawn tight. I'm surprised she just let him walk out like that. Okay. Worried mom turned to look down at you and Lizzie. You two were playing nice with our new friend, weren't you? <laughs> of course we're gonna tell the truth. We're gonna tell on Lizzie. Lizzie's being mean. No, Lizzie and Cove kept yelling at each other. They wouldn't stop fighting about everything. Your sister's jaw dropped, looking betrayed, as mom put both hands on her hips. Elizabeth! I told you to be kind to him. He's having a hard time right now. 
Lizzie's mouth closed back up, replaced by a tiny frown. I know, I tried, but he was... No buts. We both know you can show someone a great time when you put your mind to it. We're going to apologize to Cove and his dad over the phone when he gets home from work tonight. Lizzie hung her head, dragging a foot across the ground in front of her. Okay, Mom. Good girl. He caught pieces of Lizzie sulking to herself about how it was his fault, too, but it was over. All right, we better get a move on. Let's go, kids. No Lani. Where did you leave the car keys? Whoa, look at this car illustration. <laughs> so detailed. Mom hustled you all out the door and you noticed during the car ride to golf practice that Lizzie was quieter than usual. She was usually the first one to request which music to listen to in the car, but she didn't say a thing. Your parents noticed she wasn't in a mood to be bothered. They gave her space and Mommy just asked you what you'd like to listen to. Wow, we're finally getting some attention. <laughs> <laughs> you picked your favorite song it always made the car ride more fun you chose the soundtrack to a cool movie you saw a couple months ago you chose the song you knew Lizzie liked maybe that would cheer her up <sighs> I guess we can be nice we were happy to see it brightened her up right away and she started singing along with you soon enough her bad mood was a thing of the past fortunately I am not that petty <laughs> When the car ride was over, you spent the twilight hour watching Lizzie hit things with other girls her age. You didn't know much about golf, but you could tell that she really liked it, so you sat with your moms and tried to puzzle it out. It was nice sitting outside after being cooped up in the house all day, and you stretched out your legs to let the last few minutes of sun warm your skin. When the sun was finally out of sight, dipping behind the horizon, you all got ready to leave. Instead of going straight home, your moms took the family out to dinner. You went to a restaurant you had all been going to ever since you could remember. Do you guys have a restaurant like that? Like, just one that's just existed forever? Ever, like, you've gone to it and every once in a while it's just like, maybe tiny changes or no changes at all to that place? I can have- I can list a few couple places like that in my childhood. The whole afternoon had been a bunch of shouting you hadn't been able to stop but you could kind of tell that all this helped Lizzie be less angry. Car ride home was quiet, with only the radio providing escape from silence. Lizzie had been in better spirits now, but the closer you got to your neighborhood, the more she wiggled in her seat and frowned out the window. She knew what was coming when y'all got back home. Clearly, she was dreading it. <laughs> yeah, that's right, you gotta say sorry. Soon enough, Mom was turning onto your street, and then reversing into the driveway. When she cut the ignition, it was dead silent. No one spoke, only unbuckled their seatbelts and opened their doors. Lizzie was the last one out. Once everyone was inside and done taking off their shoes, she propped her hands on her hips. So. Now then, Mr. Holden's car is in his driveway, so he should he should be back from work. That's good news, isn't it, Elizabeth? You and Cove can hash things out before the day's done. Lizzie didn't complain or put up a fight. Her head ducked so she didn't have to meet anyone's eyes. She nodded once. Good, let's move this to the kitchen. Mom went over to the house phone, the rest of you following behind her. Mommy put a gentle hand on Lizzie's shoulder as they walked side by side. You watched them from the back. This was only happening because you told on Lizzie. You didn't regret it. You felt a little guilty, like you had betrayed your sister. You can't like doing to, but had to. But it was her fault for doing it in the first place. I didn't like doing it, but she deserved it. Being a tattletale didn't feel good, and you wouldn't want someone else to tell your moms everything you did. Still, your mom had asked directly, and you wanted and you wanted to be a liar even less. The four of you stood around the kitchen in a lopsided square, all eyes were on Lizzie, who kept her gaze on her feet. You remember the number of Coe's house, don't you, honey? Lizzie jerked her head in another nod, sullen. Without further prompting, she stepped forward and she began to dial. Wow, look at this phone. <laughs> Mom reached over and pressed the button on the base. Suddenly, you could hear the phone ringing. She turned on the speaker. The phone rang a couple times, and then stopped. Mr. Holden's warm voice came through the other end. Evening, Holden residence. As they looked over at Mommy, unsure, she nodded encouragingly. Hi, Mr. Holden. It's, um, Lizzie. Can I talk to Ko? Lizzie Pascal? What a surprise! But of course, you can say hey to the boy. He sounded cheery as usual, though it definitely meant it when he said it was a surprise. 
You thought hard, and you were sure that your sister had never called Cove's house before. Mom spoke up before Mr. Holden or Lizzie could say anything more. Her arms were crossed over her chest, her lips pursed. Hi, Cliff. Nolani, Calico, and I are here too. Good evening. We're sorry to bother you so late. Spoke up to say hello too. Hey, I'm Mr. Holden. The gang's all here, huh? Is something the matter? His voice grew a bit concerned. Mommy was quick to reassure him. No, well, yes, but it's going to be okay. Lizzie and Cove got into a bit of a fight today. We were hoping that the two of them could talk and make up. Is this a good time for you and Cove? A fight? Cove didn't tell me anything about that when he when I came home. It does explain the funk he's been in tonight. He chuckled lightly. Despite that, it didn't seem like he really thought it was funny. <laughs> anyway, it's good. You didn't catch us at a bad time. I'll go grab him for you. There was some shuffling on the other end. He must not have gone far because you could still hear him calling out. Cove, there's someone on the phone for you. After a beat of silence, there was more muffled talking from Cove's dad. Come on, bud. Lizzie called just so she could talk to you. It took a bit of back and forth, though the conversation seemed one-sided since you couldn't hear Cove properly. Eventually, Cove took the phone from his dad. Hello? You open your mouth only for mommy to catch your eye and shake your head softly. You frowned but didn't say anything. Uh, hey, it's Lizzie. Yeah, I know. Dad told me. Cove's tone was defensive. Lizzie turned to mom, scowling. One stern look from her, though, and Lizzie turned away. I just called to say, I'm sorry. We're not playing nice with you today. I won't do it again. Lizzie's eyes were downcast, her voice low. You could tell she felt uncomfortable apologizing to Cove in front of everyone. She was still being genuine about feeling bad. Cove must have realized that, too, because he sighed quietly. I want gold. Lizzie was momentarily stunned, silent by the demand. You could understand why he did it. You had wanted gold, too. All right, you win the gold. Okay, I guess I'm sorry, too. A sense of relief washed over everyone at his acceptance of the apology. Mom uncrossed her arms. While Mommy's shoulders relaxed... Oh, while Mommy's shoulders relaxed, Lizzie's eyebrows raised up. He wondered if she thought that he'd refuse her apology. Dad, can I get off the phone now? <laughs> you couldn't see him, but it was obvious that Cove felt awkward about the situation. He had come off uncomfortable the entire time, really. Yeah, yeah you can go back to your room if you want. Be sure to say goodbye first, though. Um, bye, Lizzie. Bye. With that said, Cove must have handed the phone to his dad and left since Mr. Holden spoke up. All well as that ends well, as they say. Thanks for arranging this. I'm sure he appreciates it. As Mom replied, Lizzie tugged on Mommy's hand to catch her attention. Can I go now, too? Sure, sweetie. Thank you very much for apologizing to Cove. Mom flashed a brief smile at Lizzie and nodded her agreement. Given permission to leave, Lizzie scurried off towards the stairs. She seemed to be feeling much better with the incident behind her. Mom and Mommy returned to the phone, taking it off the speaker. They continued talking to Mr. Holden. You couldn't tell what about. You were glad that was the end of it all. Lizzie and Cove might not get along and probably still won't, but they weren't mad at each other anymore. Mom and Mommy weren't upset either. Everything was finally back to normal. With that thought, you retreated to your own room with a spring in your step. We've done it. We mitigated the situation. Get two more, and then summer ends. <gasps> Our childhood. Cove wasn't able to do many things that summer. When you, him, and Shiloh sat out on the shoreline one bright morning, he could tell he wanted to be in the water. But there was no way he'd be swimming anytime soon. Not with his cast. The waves washed a single shell to shore, glittering in blue. Another reminder of the places he couldn't go. From what you'd heard about Cove's old life so far, in tiny pieces and fragments, you could tell that he'd do anything to be able to get the cast off. Even cut it off himself if he could. Doesn't sound very safe, don't do that. He thought about how his summer last year must have been totally different from this, with his old home and his mom and dad. But now he was here, with you and Shiloh and Lizzie and everyone else, and he couldn't even go in the sea. This town wasn't bad, it had all your favorite things in it. But sitting there, on the same beach you'd grown up on, you could understand that not everybody else felt the same way about Sunset Bird as you did. <gasps> it's our friend, Shiloh. You watched him from the corner of your eye quietly, and he finally said aloud what you had been pondering. I wish I could go in. The water? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll be able to do it soon. Cove only sighed in response. Apparently, soon wasn't soon enough. It's so pretty, the ocean. 
Mm-hmm. And huge. There could be anything out there, like mermaids. True. Believe. I believe mermaids are real. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you didn't have cast. <laughs> We're not gonna... No, mermaids are definitely real, you guys. So it might be fun if we could. We're not gonna ditch him here and swim by ourselves. We stick together. But it's not like there's anything we can do about it. Hmm. Obviously not interested in hearing much more of your input on the situation. Cove turned back to the water. But as he looked away, something about Shiloh's slow, careful movements caught his eye. Hey, are you building a sandcastle? Sort of. I was only playing around while you were talking. I'm listening. Maybe I could too. I've only made big piles before. It's really nothing special. I'm sure you'll be good at it right away. Well, how do you do it then? Shiloh's cheeks lit up. You could tell he was a little bit uncomfortable to have Cove's expectant stare on him. I'll play too. I love making sand stuff. <laughs> Never really made one before. There's nothing else to do. I love making sand stuff. You know, I used to... It's been a while since I was last at the beach. As surprising as that sounds. Uh, maybe more specifically, I haven't made anything on the beach in a long time. I used to make, like, sand sculptures of sea lions for fun. Because that was, like, the easiest shape of an animal that you can just, like, pile sand into, you know? He put his hands back to his seashells and sand and nodded. I don't do a lot. Here's how I like to get a house started. Shiloh, focusing more intently than you'd ever seen him, guided Cove through his process. You happily use your own method. It didn't take long for the three of you to each have humble structures prepared. That's all, kind of. You can do anything now. Like making it bigger, add some seashells, carve a pretty pattern. I bet you'll have great ideas. Okay. I've never successfully made sand sculptures. You should change that. Now you gotta try next time you go to the beach. I'm gonna make it bigger. Mine is gonna be a real castle. Cool! This is gonna be a house! Looking at the base of your sandcastle, you decided to make... <laughs> a mansion. We're gonna make a castle. Let's, let's be... let's go with the classic. Looking at the base of your sandcastle, you decided to build a fancy castle. The better part of the next hour is spent focusing on your own work. The boys were the same. Even Shiloh didn't sneak as many peeks at everyone else as he usually did. He finished shaping before either of them did, glancing up from what you'd built. Seems you got done so fast because they already searched around for extra decorations. Shiloh had grabbed most of the really interesting stuff, and Cove had a lot of the shells, but there were still options. First thing you reached for was a... Ooh, a red bottle cap, a blue seashell, or a green piece of sea glass. I like the sea glass. It was the best fit for your castle, you decided. It was see-through and sparkly. So you displayed it front and center, making it a headlining feature of your whole thing. Pleased with your result, you finally took a proper look around that wasn't focused on the sand itself. Both Cove and Shiloh seemed super immersed still. You knew you could probably sneak a peek at either one's work. Mm. Maybe we should keep it a surprise till the end. You said to watch some clouds go by. The silence was unbroken. What's on top of yours, Shiloh? You peek closer and discover something shiny sticking out of Shiloh's sand chimney. Oh, it's just a gum wrapper. It looks like smoke! It's good. That's smart. <laughs> what? We're not gonna call it a worm. It's smoke. I would've never thought of using gum wrapper as smoke. He's a genius. You really know a lot about this. Shiloh smiled without a word. And that was that for the current topic. Alco, can I see what you did? Sure. He began surveying your work. The castle you'd built was pretty impressive, all things considered. It had archways, tall walls, and even little moats circling it. You would probably feel safe living there. Maybe your moms were the queens. Shiloh quickly decided to jump in the new conversation. Hey, Calico, what did you do? It's a castle. Shiloh didn't look so happy anymore. You both built castles? Yeah. Aw, that's neat. How you guys matched? It's too bad we didn't all do it. Next time we should. Wouldn't that be boring? If something is only one of that thing, that makes it special. Yeah, for sandcastles and stuff. 
people too. My dad always says how everybody is their own man, a real individual. No, Shiloh, no. I don't think I'm very special, don't say that. Why not? Nobody else is you. Shiloh simply shook his head. I'm not different. A beat passed between the two. Kobe then looked down at his own work again. Hmm, okay. He didn't seem to be bothered leaving the disagreement hanging there. Kobe had other things on his mind. My dad tried to get me to make sandcastles the first time we came to this beach. I didn't want to. Kobe trailed off. Again, there was another moment of silence. Shiloh shifted and opened his mouth to say something, but Kova spoke up before he could. He didn't think he noticed that Shiloh was going to talk. Hey, do you know what happened when your moms met my dad, Calico? You cocked your head, thinking about it briefly. Hmm. I wasn't there. They didn't tell me. I just remember what happened when I met your dad. He tried to slip me 20 bucks. <laughs> Mr. Holden had been a weird stranger then. Well, he was still kind of strange. No other parent acted like him, but you knew him better at this point. Now that you thought about it, it made a lot of sense that Cove's dad talked to him about people being unique. You were pulled from your thoughts when Cove continued. Oh, well I was there. I don't think my mom has met your dad. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she hasn't. Calico's parents and my dad met the same day I met them. I'm gonna say what happened. Okay, let's say it. Shiloh frowned to himself, ducking his head. His hat cast a shadow over his face. You could tell he was still upset at not being included in Cove's choice of topic. No, no, Shiloh. That was kind of boring for him, though giving people their own turn to say the things they want is important too. <laughs> he wants to say something, let him speak. Huh? We were talking, just not right now. I'm talking to you, he can listen. Cove, don't be mean. Shiloh's expression barely flickered at the words. He still looked put off. Cove continued like the interruption had happened. He was determined to tell the tale. When we moved here, we didn't bring a lot of things with us. Only some stuff that would fit in Dad's car. We didn't even get a moving truck. I sat in there while Dad brought it all inside. I didn't want to get out because I knew Dad would make me look around the new house. I really didn't want to do that. He, his lips twisted into a frown as he recalled that. Then I saw your mom's. They were in a car too and stopped at your house. I guess they were coming back from somewhere or something. My dad noticed. He waved his hand, then went over to the front of your house when he started talking to them. I don't know what they said. I couldn't hear it. But he couldn't see me anymore since he was looking the other way. So I opened the car door and left. I wanted to get away and went behind the houses. I found those hills there. The ones where we met for the first time. You just up and left? What in the world? Hmm. <laughs> Kovo nodded, then stared at you. You stared back. He didn't go on to say anything more. What? That's all you wanted to say? Kovo's brows wrinkled, like he didn't understand why you were surprised. That's all that happened. <laughs> okay, okay. Why didn't you tell the story if nothing happened? You really gotta get better at telling stories. That was a pretty bad story. Thanks for telling me. Hmm. That's this one, because... You could have just let Shiloh speak, and then tell your thing after. It wasn't that important. There was no point! But that was how our parents met. I didn't make this story up. That's not really my point. Yeah, we're a smart eight-year-old. Cove just was not understanding the issue here. Shiloh's mouth twisted into a scowl of disbelief, but he said nothing. Why'd you bring that up anyway? There was a slight shrug of Cove's shoulders. I was thinking about it because of the sandcastle. It made me remember when I moved here. Dad showed me the beach first, before we went back to the car to unpack. He was really excited about it for some reason. Cole's brows furrowed a little bit more as he quietly raked his hand through the sand. I get it. You thought maybe Mr. Holden wasn't that excited about the beach and was instead hoping Cove might be. But the line of conversation had come to its end. Even Cove was done with it. Some other topic had popped into his head. Shiloh fidgeting uncomfortably in the sand had made Kova aware of his presence again. They looked at each other, or you could, and you can only wonder what this might be about. Hey Shiloh. Yeah? Why are you always turning so red, even when nothing is happening? Kova! <laughs> Clearly startled, he jerked back. Neither you or Shiloh had expected that to be how he got included in the conversation again. I don't know, I guess. Okay, it's kind of weird. Cove, stop it. 
Shiloh's eyes were wide with embarrassment and his lips twitched, and he was blushing even harder than before. Maybe it wasn't only this. Perhaps it was simply the last straw, but it was a big deal to Shiloh. A huge deal. He didn't just look sad, he seemed almost panicked. You weren't sure if he was about to cry or run away or what, but you soon got an answer. Why do you wear glasses? Most kids don't wear glasses, and nobody's named Cove. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it was probably just your dad bugging Calico's family some more, because you don't have anyone else who'll ever play with you. Oh my god, this is intense. Cove blinked. The tension on the beach was suddenly uncomfortable in a way you didn't know how to move past. It didn't seem like the kind of thing you'd get upset about, though you hadn't ever known what kind of thing would bother Shiloh. I'm sorry. Me too. I was just wondering. <laughs> hey, let's build another sandcastle. Um, are we gonna build more? I'm nervously mess with the sand. Um, let's build a sandcastle. Haha. <laughs> The day is going to be over soon. Ah, Calico, you're right. The sun is going down so fast. You all went back to making more sand buildings, but the whole mood had changed. Shiloh's cheeriness was clearly gone, and Cove looked as confused as ever about why the other boy had blown up. The air stayed uncomfortable the rest of the afternoon, right up to the moment that Shiloh's mom appeared at the beach to take him home. At least you tried to do something to resolve it, though, and it seemed like it helped. Even though Shiloh's smile when he said goodbye to Cove wavered, it stayed as bright as ever for you. That had to count for something. But with Shiloh gone and the sun going down, you knew it was time for you and Cove to head to your own houses. So you led the way on the path back home. Walk home was quiet. You passed by familiar landmarks, shoes thumping against the sidewalk in near-perfect unison. Cove was clearly caught up in thinking about something. Tell me what are your thoughts... What are you thinking? You didn't want to leave it hanging in the air, so you decided to just ask. Why are you making that face? Oh, I was just wondering. Cole fell silent again for a few more seconds and sighed. Why did Shiloh act like that when I said he was all red a lot? <laughs> you were being rude of him. Uh, you were kind of... Uh, you weren't being nice. No, he wasn't. It looked like that to me, and it wasn't just saying that one thing. You're not very nice to Shiloh. I didn't mean it like that. Shiloh's kind of weird to talk to. See? That's kind of rude. Hmm. I guess. I can get it. Why he would do that. Sometimes I get really mad, too. Despite seemingly coming to a conclusion, Cove's mood was still sour. What Shiloh said didn't make any sense, anyway. Parents always talk to other parents and set up stuff so their kids play together. My dad didn't do anything weird. Oh, I guess your dad didn't tell you. <laughs> he tried to give me $20. <laughs> to be your friend. He struggled not to make a face at that. His dad definitely did something weird to try and get you to spend some time with Cove. But Cove didn't know that. <laughs> mm. I, I don't think I should tell him. <laughs> I mean, we hang we still hang out with him now, and we didn't take the money, so... Cove's shoulders relax. You don't even notice that he had tensed up. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Anyway, I knew the whole time Shiloh shouldn't have been saying things like that. You nodded, but you didn't speak. You kept your eyes firmly on the ground. By now, the two of you were on the sidewalk near your houses. It was time to part ways. Bye, Cove. Your parents hadn't planned anything else for you, though you knew that you'd see him eventually. Cove nodded, already turning away. Bye, Calico. You made your way to your house at a leisurely pace, going up the driveway to get to the front door. Before you went inside, you looked back. Cove was halfway to his house, his hands shoved into his pockets. You still felt a little unsure with what you were supposed to do about the deal Cove's dad had offered. You didn't want to say something bad, or something you shouldn't. You might change your mind sometime. It was always tomorrow, after all, but for now it, def it was definitely something that you keep to yourself. With the final look, you went inside your house. Okay, last one, and then we can call it a night for now. And then summer will end, and we can move on to step two uh, for next time. All right. Tonight, we're going to catch fireflies. At this blunt declaration from your sister, you looked up from your macaroni and cheese dinner. 
Mm, mac and cheese. Fireflies are a familiar sight over summer, coming out on warm nights to dance through the sky. Tonight was particularly balmy. You knew there were bound to be a ton of them around. Oh, you are, are you? You started eating faster. <laughs> I grin curved your lips as you started to eat a bit faster, excited at what was to come. It seemed like you were too excited, however, as you started to choke and cough on your food from shoveling it down so quickly. <laughs> Mommy reached over to pat you on the back, firmly helping to dislodge the noodles and enable you to breathe again. You took a big gulp of water from your glass, giving your moms a sheepish look. Oops. That's a good idea, Lizzie. Can we, Mrs. Pascal? Shiloh tapped his fork against the table excitedly, his face lighting up as he looked at Lizzie. It was unusual for Shiloh to still be here. Like always, his mom had to bring him over really early in the morning before her job started. But normally she would have picked him up by now. She called before dinner to let your moms know she'd be late. You didn't hear why. Probably more work things. You thought maybe getting to hang out with Shiloh for longer is what made Lizzie want to keep running around outside. Staying at home and watching TV was never an option for her with guests over. That's why you were pretty sure she'd get your moms to agree. Well, it's already so dark out there. Lizzie gave mom the best puppy eyed puppy dog eyes she could, slowly spooning mac and cheese into her mouth while you waited there for their response. Let them go. Nights like this don't happen every day. Your parents exchanged a look, then mom eventually sighed and nodded back. Yes! Along with Lizzie's cheers, you threw your arms up in triumph, but waited until you'd finished chewing to say anything more because you knew it was rude to talk with your mouth full, but nothing wrong with eating faster and almost choking to death on macaroni and cheese. Fine, fine. fine. Just make sure you stay on the hill behind our house with all the poppies, okay? Yeah. Duh, mom. That's where most of them are. The idea had only just been planted in your head, but you already could just picture all the glowing lights spread out in front of you, like the fairies from the bedtime stories Mommy read sometimes. All too quickly, it became a race to see who could finish their food first. No choking at the dinner table now. That's right, if someone died, we'd have to cancel the firefly trip after all. Mom said it like a joke, but you knew that they were both telling you kids to slow down. Shiloh did immediately. When you glanced at Lizzie, you saw her still eating faster than she should. Elizabeth. No one is gonna die. Sheesh. A knock on the door interrupted Mom before she could no doubt scold your sister. I'll get it. Your big sister jumped out of her seat and ran over to the door, pulling it open without even looking to the window to see who it was. You shifted in your seat to try to get a glimpse of the unexpected guests. Hi. Good evening, Cove. Your mommy had already walked to the door by the time you managed to see past Shiloh's floppy, flappy hat. Cove. Why is he here? Had your parents invited him over? He certainly hadn't heard anything about it. He tried to catch Cove's eye, but he was too busy staring at the ground in front of him. Going back to shovel a forkful of macaroni into your mouth, you kept one ear on the conversation. Then for a few seconds, Cove said nothing. He only stood there and looked up at your mommy with a face almost like he was considering turning around and leaving. My dad told me to drop this off because I guess he borrowed it from you. Ko took a familiar screwdriver from out of his large side pocket, eyes now dropped to the floor. We left ours back home when we moved. Great, thanks, bye! <laughs> Thank you, here, why don't you come inside for a bit? Lizzie crossed her arms and lifted her chin. Ko shrugged, and Mom stood from the table too. I'll give your dad a call to let him know you got here alright. Ko shuffled fully inside, eyes remaining on the ground. Mommy closed the door behind him. Hi, Ko! Shiloh gave Cove a friendly smile while waving by holding up his hand and opening and closing his fingers. Cove nodded in response. <laughs> Invite him. Join us. We need more hands to catch more fireflies. You could see Lizzie eyeing you for mentioning the excursion to an outsider, but she'd get over it. If Cove said no, you'd understand, though. Catching fireflies wasn't something that everyone liked to do. Okay. I want to see them. I've never caught one before. It's too bad he didn't have a chance before now. The fireflies weren't out when he first moved in and there must not have been anywhere he used to live. I can't go until after dinner. After she pointed this out, Lizzie walked back to the table and took her seat. There wasn't much left on her plate. Since this was very true, he decided to finish up your own stuff as well. 
Cove stepped closer and eyed what was on the menu for your family's meal. Have you eaten yet? Yeah, my dad and I ate earlier. What did you have? Eggs. The clipped, one-word answer seemed to discourage Shiloh from asking any more questions. His eyes slowly wandered back to the last scraps of food on his plate. Her phone call with Cove's dad must have ended because your mom came back into the room. Okay. Cove, your dad said you can stay for a little while if you'd like, but he's going to come get you before it gets too much later. Sure. Fun. Oh fun, this will be so nice. As you polished off the meal, you hoped it would be too. The three of you all finished eating shortly after, and Lizzie led the way outside. Remember, don't stray too far. It's fine, Mom. Shiloh trailed so closely after Lizzie he was nearly stepping on her heels. Cove hesitated at the door. Come on, let's go! After a moment, he did. Bye. Bye, children. <laughs> Goodbye, young ones. <laughs> the two of you were a good 10 or 15 feet behind Lizzie and Shiloh by the time you walked outside. You pushed the door shut behind you, watching their figures get farther and farther away. You're so slow, Calico. We don't have all night. You started to run when you heard Lizzie's voice calling you, but paused when you saw Cove still walking at a relaxed pace. <laughs> walk with him. We'll just walk. We're chillin'. You knew there wasn't any real hurry, but you couldn't help staring longingly at Shiloh and Lizzie getting farther and farther away. The two of you followed after the footsteps Lizzie and Shiloh left behind until you reached the hill behind your house. Lizzie had already climbed to the top. Shiloh was spinning in circles somewhere around the middle. On seeing the gently glowing, winking lights, you moved a bit faster, eyes widening in delight. Shiloh took a moment to come over and welcome the both of you to the hill. Hi guys, it's really great out, huh? See how many there are? Yeah. A firefly danced through the air, landing on Cove's sea green head. Shiloh couldn't help but giggle. Oh yeah. We both laugh. Covering your mouth with a hand, the sound escaped you and Cove looked at you in confusion. What? He gestured to his head and he reached up, making the firefly dart away. Cove jumped, then followed after the glow. Oh, oh look! Lizzie has one! That's amazing! Shiloh ran at the to the highest point of the hill, making sure not to lose his hat or backpack along the way. You know, I've never actually seen fireflies in real life. I'd like to one day. That'd be cool. You hummed as the group divided and conquered, shifting your gaze to the dozens of other fireflies sailing around. The game was on. You had a bandage on your thumb, you tried to be cautious of that. How did we get a bandage on our thumb? Oh, on our palm? You had two bandages on your hand. You're so good about making cuts or scratches, you weren't too worried about that. Yeah, because I'm, I'm just very careful. Spotting one close by, you approached it with assassin-like stealth, crouching down to make yourself seem like less of a threat. Slowly dragging one foot in front of the other, you crept up towards it, arms outstretched. You closed your hands around the little glowing orb, careful not to crush it. The firefly landed on your palm, almost docile, and you stared down at your prize in the light. <laughs> his tiny legs tickled your skin and you giggled at the sensation. Cove kept up with his own target, but when he tried to grab it, his pink cast waved awkwardly through the air foiling his efforts to clap his hands around the firefly. Wah. Cove watched it vanish into thin air with a dissatisfied expression on his face. <laughs> um, I'm gonna show him our firefly. Check this out. Look over here! I got one! Come see! Cove didn't notice you. He was more preoccupied with continuing the hunt, hopefully without his cast getting in the way this time. That was fine, you had your own plans. I'm going to go after more. With renewed vigor, you ran out into the hill. Or vigor. You're not sure how much time passed while you were in the thick of it. All you could focus on was the adventure at hand. No critter was safe from your grasp. At first you tried to keep a tally of how many you had caught, but once the number grew higher than ten, you had no more fingers left to count with. This is definitely... Reminding me of, like, my childhood, because I was also that kid that, like, ran around and caught bugs and put them in, like, my little bug, um, enclosure. <laughs> I've also been bitten by a lizard, uh, after I, like, chased it around the park. So, 
That was... Yeah, I was, I was that kid. <laughs> you were having the time of your life, racing up and down the hill with the crash of the ocean and the sound of everyone's laughter echoing in the background. Eventually the fireflies began to thin out and your energy started to lapse. You decided it was time to call off the hunt. Calico Cove, get up here! We're gonna have a race! The shouting caught you off guard. It had been quite a while since you heard from Lizzie or Shiloh. You glanced over to see them both standing on top of the hill again, Lizzie beckoning you with quick hand gestures. If she was like that, you knew there wasn't much room for disagreement. Up the incline you went, from the corner of your eye you saw a cove was coming as well. Yeah, I spent a lot of time outside, so I used to be really tan, and then uh, maybe like around high school is when I stopped going outside and just was like became an indoors kid because I just wanted to focus on um, drawing all the time. So I became a potato. <laughs> if she was like that, you knew there wasn't much room for disagreement. Up the incline you went. From the corner of your eye you saw Cove was coming as well. He didn't care for Lizzie a lot, so you thought he might be intrigued just by the idea of a race. Hi! Hi! Cove, you can't roll down the hill. You could hurt your arm again. You'll be the referee for the rest of us. As Lizzie pointed this out, Cove froze in place. Oh, it was that kind of race. He frowned down at his cast. That was the second time it got in the way tonight. <laughs> yeah, art turns us into indoor gremlins, it's true. I I remember like everybody would point out like how pale I was because I was just inside all the time and the only light I would get is like the light from my computer <laughs> and whatever daylight that I saw from going to school. What? Yeah, you'll watch and see who gets to the bottom first. That's important. Got it? I guess. The cast was sturdy. If he was careful, he could have done it. Lizzie might have just been looking for a reason to make someone else the referee, but it was already decided. Hmm. Let's keep him company. I feel bad. He's already had to like miss out on so many things because of his cast. Really? Really? Why? You don't have to. It's okay. I want to watch. You move beside him on the top of the hill, even though Lizzie eyed you and made a face. That's not how races work. We only need one referee. Shrugging your shoulders, you refuse to budge, and Lizzie let out a huff before throwing her hands in the air. Fine. I'll be the winner, whether you join or not. Hey, what about Shiloh? Shiloh can be the winner. Lizzie moved to lay down, and Shiloh did the same. Ko stood slightly to the side to get a better vantage point, and you stood next to him. Count down! Ko stood up a little straighter. It seemed like he was taking his newfound referee duties seriously. Three, two, one, go! Lizzie and Shiloh took off, letting gravity do the work and rolling at high speeds towards the bottom of the hill. You and Cove leaned forward to watch them go, eyes peeled for which of the two would reach the bottom first. They were both neck and neck until about halfway down the hill, Lizzie started to veer off the side, giving Shiloh a huge advantage. She obviously hadn't noticed the thing, and as soon as Shiloh reached the bottom of the hill, he jumped up excitedly and threw his hands in the air. I won! Almost immediately, he fell back onto the grass, still dizzy from his roll down the hill. Lizzie stomped out of the bush she had ended up in, splutter spluttering angrily and brushing leaves from the front of her dress. Not bad. You got lucky. Let's do it again and see who wins for real. Kids, it's time to come in. No! You snickered, feeling grateful you hadn't been a part of the mini debacle. You caught Cove's eyes and saw that he was doing the same. It had gotten late and was beginning to feel just a bit chilly as you made your way out of the hills, but the cold in the air hadn't dampened anyone's spirits. The four of you walked back home together, side by side, down your neighborhood street, discussing the evening, with each person trying to prove that they were the one who caught the most fireflies. You knew that whoever really did catch the most didn't matter much anyway. All that mattered was that you all had a good time. Which, judging by the smiles on everyone's faces, you did! <gasps> and with that, summer has ended. So let's save. Okay. And then... Oh. Not this menu. Um, oh, I guess so. Because I don't know if the next one will just continue and then we'll have to keep reading, so... Stop here. So we made it to the end of step one, I assume. Yeah. And again, I don't know why OBS isn't showing the whole menu, but the men we were on the main menu. But anyways, 
Um, yeah. I'm sorry about all the trouble tonight with um, 24 Killers. I really wanted to play, but you know, I'll try to figure out why it won't show up on OBS. And maybe, maybe I'll just have to like check on OBS. I don't know what's going on, but again, hopefully we don't have any troubles tomorrow. I'll try, well, yeah, I'm gonna have to try to see and make sure that it's working smoothly before then. But yeah, um, your track two of American Football F1, the summer ends, yeah. Woo, we made it through step one. <laughs> so tomorrow, I think it's at 11 p.m. We're going to be playing in the Spot Fest, and I believe we'll have a, a new friend joining us on stream, so that'll be fun. And again, hopefully everything will be working smoothly and not giving us trouble. But yeah, t we're going Team Alien, so we'll be playing that tomorrow, and then the night after we'll be playing uh, Spotfest again. And unfortunately we can't do a day three because I'm unavailable <laughs> before it ends. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming. Yes, it's time to conquer. We're going to win! So I'll put up the waiting room link, but um, all the waiting rooms for all the streams are already up on um, my channel. But I'll tweet them out just so you guys can remember. Anyways, thanks again for joining, and I'll see you all tomorrow night. Have a good one. Oh, and then we'll eventually come back to um, our life again to play Step 2 another time. Okay, see ya. A's better win, I agree. Let's go.